Want to be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So today, let's live your best belief life and get some amazing motivation from Grant Cardone. If you want to be in business for yourself and free, you must learn to dominate. You cannot compete, okay? How many were trained this? Competition is a healthy thing. That message was not being delivered to entrepreneurs. That message was being delivered to consumers. There was somebody saying, look, the more, more oil companies we have, the better, because it's good for the customer, right? The, the more technology companies we have, it's not just Microsoft, the better for the customer. And in, uh, inventions and you know, improvements and products comes from competition. But if you're the one playing the game, you want to dominate the field. So look, here's the deal. I might be wrong in what I say, okay? I might be wrong in the things I do in my life and the business that I started. My family's told me not to start every business that I've been involved in, every one of them. Every one of them was a risk. Every one of them I had to take a chance. I remember my mom used to tell me, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I'm like, mom, you wouldn't do anything. Well, you wouldn't do anything except be the mother, a great mother to five children. My mother wasn't an entrepreneur. She didn't have my dreams. Just because she's my mom doesn't mean she dreams like me. Would you agree? Okay. My mom was wrong about everything she told me not to do. Love my mom to death. Okay. Unbelievable friend of mine. She was wrong. I needed to do those things. Okay. Steve Jobs needed to build this phone. Would you agree? Did he help a lot of people? Did he make some money while he was doing it? $119 billion in five years in the bank cash. I'm not talking about, pro I'm talking about in the, in, done in the bank, sitting there, okay? Brings a great product to the marketplace, domination or competition? Total domination. Coca-Cola, competition or domination? Total domination, okay? Exxon, total domination. You see what I'm saying? You want to be in a dominating point, okay? So what we got to do is we got to get you thinking. We got to get you thinking like the dominators think. How do they act? How does Warren Buffett act? What does Warren Buffett do with his time all the time? Those are the people I study today. I don't study the people that I went to school with, the teachers I went to school with. I don't even study my own family members, okay? I'm looking for people that are way up here that I can say, hey, what are they doing? Because they're doing it right. You got to get some haters. You need haters. No school is going to teach you how to get a hater, okay? High school, elementary school, colleges, what do they teach? You want to be the most popular person. No, you want haters, okay? The companies that are hated are the companies that are exploding. The people that are hated are the people that explode. If I don't hate you, if nobody hates you, nobody knows you. So the reason I'll tweet for instance, when we started, we had this, uh, th that newsletter that I sent out, okay? We sent it out every week. We were hitting people once a month, and we started getting complaints. You send stuff out too much. My office came to me. We went to twice a month. They came to me. We have more people pulling off of the newsletter. Good. Double up again. Why? I want haters. Okay? Okay. So we started sending out one every week, and then I started a Twitter account. I actually had people write, Grant Cardone, social media people, Grant Cardone is an example of what not to do with social media. I said, freaking, just multiply. <laughs> just increase it, okay? We were doing like four tweets a day, good, do two an hour. Why? Because I want my competition hating my guts. I want them talking about me. I mean, I don't really want hate people to hate me. You understand what I'm saying about? I want them so, so energized that they actually start pushing me. They start promoting me. I use every one of the news channels. If you, you, you'll see me on TV doing news one day, okay? I don't, I don't watch news. I make news. See the shift? You see the slight shift? Don't watch the news. Decide when you leave here today to make the news, right? You don't read the newspaper. You write newspaper articles. You don't read books. Yeah, read them, but learn to write them. 
And you don't, you, don't need to take for, you don't need to spend a lifetime writing the book. This was three hours. Okay, we sold 40,000 copies of this one book, and it was self-published. It's never, ever, ever been in a bookstore. A guy writes me, he says, man, you got misspelled words all in that book. I'm like, yeah, yeah, what, 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 so what, where are they? 123, 128, 134, 165, 120. I'm like, yeah, yeah, and bad grammar too. I'm like, yeah, what's your point, dude? I don't know, what's your point, man? Why do you keep telling me that? He's like, because, man, you got misspelled words in the book. It's a bestseller. <laughs> okay, so it ain't best written, okay? You know what I, now, now I, this word, just so any, nobody under, I don't want you to think that that's a cuss word. The word, look it up in the dictionary, means a complainer, a whiner, an excuse maker. I wear a little band on my pen here, uh, on my uh, wrist here. It's a little black band, and it says, champions dominate. And on the other side, don't be a little b- <laughs> That's right. Because I don't need it. I need to get rid of the whiners, the excuse makers. Oh, my God, it's the market. It's the market. Oh, my God. Prices. Oh, the inventory. Okay. Nine months ago, there's too much inventory. Now, too little inventory. You, 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 human beings have so many excuses, it's, it's unbelievable. You know why? Because you watch the news too much. Because you've agreed to receive news, not make news. If you know what day it is, you are not busy enough. I recently heard this week Oh, it's Monday, man. It's so hard to get started on a Monday. I'm like, dude, how do you even know it's Monday? I don't know what day it is. On Wednesday, we hear it's humpback day. We're halfway there. So it's Friday and it's like, oh, thank God it's Friday or follow Friday or like, dude, how do you people know what day it is? You're not busy enough. You need to be so freaking busy that you don't know what time it is. You don't know if it's before lunch, after lunch, before dinner, after dinner. Come on, you've had those productive days. Remember the day when you were so productive, you, you literally worked through lunch and dinner and you looked up at seven o'clock. You should have been home an hour ago and you're like, dude, I hadn't had lunch or dinner. You know why? Because that day you were eating the marketplace. You were consuming the marketplace because you were active, productive, hitting it, slamming, creative, and completely committed. Look, I don't know what Monday, Wednesday, or Friday are. I don't know about Saturdays and Sundays. I know this. Create tremendous amounts of activity. So much activity that you lose track of time. Your success is not going to come from watching TV or looking at a calendar. Your success is going to come from activity, from being busy, from being obsessed, from being like so into it that you don't know about, oh my gosh, it's the Monday morning blues or Wednesday humpback or Friday what? I don't know, Friday what? Whatever. Okay? Get busy. Hey, man. How are you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? You got a book coming out, don't you? Uh, You just came out. Where can people get it? Get it on uh, Amazon, easiest spot, built to serve, right there. Let's go, man. If you guys don't know Evan, follow Evan Carmichael. He's got a new book out, Build to Serve. Go grab it today at Amazon. There's a good dude right here. In different places in life, I promise you, you're going to find you don't know where to go. Everybody goes through this. The most successful people in the world wake up some mornings with no clue what to do today. Okay, so first thing I want you to know is that it's normal. It happens to everybody. It's not like you're a bad person or you're lost or you're depressed or you you got some problem you need to take medication for. Everybody, everybody, regardless of their stature in life, where they are, regardless of their money, their relationship, their job, they run the joint. Promise you, no matter how much they present, like they look like they got the whole package put together. Everybody, everybody has those days, and the sun is kicking today, has those days where uh, they don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, you know? Uncertainty. You, you feel terrible. My friend Dale Christensen told me when I was 
25 years old, I was experiencing depression every day. He's like, no matter what, man, no matter what, no matter what, dude, show up. Even if your eyes are bleeding, show up. I've been doing that for 34 years now. Show up even when I don't want to, okay? And then what I try to do is I try to help one person, one person. And what happened over the period of 34 years, I did that every day. I'm not depressed anymore, at least not for long periods of time. I don't use any kind of medication, don't use any kind of drugs, don't smoke weed, don't drink, over excessively drink. I might have a drink once in a while. And um, got a beautiful wife, two beautiful kids, and for the most part, my life is freaking wonderful. All I did was this, I don't overanalyze. Never do I label myself a loser, a quitter, um, I'm hard on myself. I never, I never label myself OCD, ACD, ADD, OCDD, whatever, uh, a depressant, uh, alcoholic, a drug addict. No, no, I don't. This is what I do. I do things, okay? Show up, move in the direction. I don't overanalyze. Move in the direction that, 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 that I think could be more pro-survival than staying in one place. And number three, help somebody. Dude, you don't get attention today, you have absolutely zero chance of being successful. Money follows attention. Period, end of story. You guys that don't have time for Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram, you're like, I ain't got time for all that. How many have said that before? You're like, I ain't got time for all that. I'm busy being broke. I'm busy, I'm busy running my into the ground. I'm busy, I'm busy with a bunch of old lies and old ideas. I'm busy paying for my house note for the next 27 years, stuck in one place and I can't move to jobs. When did your life change? Look, it changes every day. So, and, and, then, and then you gotta add change on top of that. How are you gonna get to Mars, right? Well, you're gonna build a ship, you're gonna probably blow up the first two or three of them. And then you're gonna stay focused on the task, get people around you that don't make excuses, get rid of people that do. And then you're gonna be like, hey, we're going to Mars, dude, no matter what it takes, what it costs. And, and, and you got to keep feeding the dream, you know? And so that's what I've done, dude. I, like from eight years old, like eight, seven, eight years old, I've just been f feeding the beast. And when I quit feeding the beast of my dreams and fantasies, when I quit giving them energy, what happened was I started feeding other demons. And, and, and my, my life went downhill. So by the time I'm 25, I'm broke, I'm wrecked, I'm spiritually bankrupt, I'm physically bankrupt, I hate myself. And then, but I didn't quit, you know. I, Jared, I just had to start rebuilding from zero. I was broke when I was 25, dead broke. I'm not talking about financially broke. Let me tell you something. No, I didn't have any money in my pocket. I didn't have any credit cards. Nobody would give me credit, okay. Didn't have a driver's license, okay. 1970 Ford Maverick, had a 1970 Ford Maverick. No air, no heat, no door handles. The floor was rusted, okay. I lived in a 275 square foot apartment, maybe 300 square feet, if you counted the little step out in the front of the front door. I paid 275 a month and I was late almost every month. So don't tell me about your money problems, man, okay? Don't tell me about where you were born. Don't tell me about your bad breaks. Don't tell me about what your daddy did or your uncle felt you up or something, did some kind of weird thing to you and I'll, I'll ruin your head or your sister abused you or whatever, okay? Look, we all got problems. You gotta fix your problems now. You gotta get your money right. So at 25 years old, I'm like, I'm getting my money right, I'm done. No more excuses, no more crybaby, no more blame. I'm getting my freaking money right. And I've spent the last 30 years doing that and now I wanna help you do the same thing, all right? Get your money right. That I did was I started studying people that did more. Not people that didn't do more, not people that said do less, not people that said, hey, don't be satisfied or be satisfied, not people that said, hey, be grateful for what you have. I started studying people that said and had done more, that you can do more. That's who I listen to today. I listen to the people, I, my friends in my life, the people I listen to, the people I talk to, the people that I follow on Facebook or, or, or YouTube or Instagram, I don't follow everybody. I follow the people that say, you can do more, dude. I follow the people that say, I am doing more. I follow the people that are actually doing something on this planet to make a difference for the better. You have to be selective. You have to give something up, okay? You cannot listen to everybody, to every voice, 
to every person that's quit or given up, you gotta make a decision. If you have that little voice inside of you that says you can do more, you have to give attention to that voice and you gotta feed it with those that support that idea that you can do more. I remember my dad, my dad died when I was 10 years old. He didn't have a problem with work. He said work is good. He said more work is better. He said lots of work is even better than that. And if you could get a whole bunch of people working together, you could actually accomplish something. Now, fast forward, you know, to, to somewhere in the last 20 years, work became an addiction. Like, oh my God, you're a work addict, you're a compulsive work person, you're overachiever, you have problems in your life. I'm like, dude, I, the only problem I got in my life is that you telling me work is a bad, bad thing. The more I work, the better I am. The more I get accomplished, the happier I am. The more I work and the more accomplished, the better I feel about myself. I'm not trying to fill up a hole. I'm trying to get my, reach my potential. Okay, check this out. 22 out of 28 million small businesses in America have no employees. Zero employees. What kind of business is that, man? I am the master and the slave. I am the prisoner, the warden, the jailhouse, the system. Dude, you're stuck. That's not a business. You cannot do the solopreneur thing even though you see some guy on Instagram rolling out with a Lambo. Okay, it's bullshit. That's not a business. A business is people in a company. Anybody know any major successful person that, 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 that didn't have a bunch of employees? Anybody here know any great company that had one employee, one flow of income, that didn't use debt, okay? Caterpillar, debt. Coca-Cola, debt. Ford Motor Company, debt. They had to use debt. You got to use debt to expand. You can't stay small and expect the world to know you. It's impossible. For me, success is, is freedom. Like, at the end of the day, I want freedom. Mon money's great, but money just gets this freedom, right? So I see a lot of my peers, in fact, a friend that I was doing business with a couple years ago, he said to me, he's like, Grant, you're the freest guy I know. Mm. This guy's extremely wealthy, worth multi-billions of dollars. He says, you my friend, the freest guy I know. I said, what, what do you mean by that? It just came out of nowhere. You say what you, we'd spent a lot of time together. And he's like, I've been with you now for about a month and a half. You say what you want. You do what you want. You know there's going to be consequences. It's clear that you're consciously aware that you're saying something that's <laughs> going to affect somebody. He's like, you're not stupid. You know what you're doing. I see you on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Instagram, Snapchat. He didn't even know what most of these was. He says, he says, I see you say what you want as often as you want, willing to make mistakes. She sees it too, right? So she knows that we go into an environment and she's gotten even used to the fact that I'm going to have my opinion. I'm going to go research things that other people might find controversial. I'm going to dig into things that people are like saying no about. You will cross the line. For me, it's about freedom. It's about, can I go where I want? Can I do business with who I want? This is what I've always wanted in my life. I want to go where I want. I don't want to be fixed in one spot. I want to be able to move. The, my first 10 years of my life, I remember going, being on one plane with my mom, my dad, and my brothers and, and sisters. We went on one trip in 10 years. Before that, we, I never, dude, I never been on a trip. We sat in coach. And, and we flew to Los Angeles and we went to Disneyland. Okay. And every time we were, every time we looked at something, everything was too expensive. So, and I was tripping out. All I knew was the people that had the money had the control. They decided when we went to the Mickey Mouse pancake shop, what rides we could be on. And, and you know, fast forward to today, you know, I don't, I don't stand in line when I go to, 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 to Disneyland. I'm like, hey, what do I have to pay so I don't have to stand in line? My dad could have probably done that too, but he wasn't, he didn't go to the next level. And, and for him, for my parents, you know, you made money, you saved money, you protected money. And that was good, but, but it's not the only solution. My dad stopped. My dad stopped at save the money and let's go on a trip. You know, rather than, hey, you know what? Let's keep building. Let's keep growing. Let's be obsessed with something monster, not just enough. And, and, and because my dad was satisfied with enough, he died at 52. I don't, I don't, maybe he'd have died at 52 the other way too. But when you scale out, dude, you can actually live longer because you're not doing all the work anymore. What do you not know about money? 
You need to ask yourself that. What is it you don't know about money? You live on a planet that has endless amounts of paper. You have plenty of sticky, sticky notepads. Everybody agree with that? I mean, how many of you are short on legal pads? Or, or sticky notes? Or ear swabs? Or cotton swabs? You're not short on any of that stuff. Everybody, everybody has plenty of that stuff, except maybe the people in Puerto Rico. That, by the way, that's a good example of what can happen to good people. Bad things happen to good people. And money, money solves some of those bad things from happening to them. Would you agree? Okay, now if you didn't leave Puerto Rico and you knew a Cat 5 storm was coming or Irma was coming to, 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 to Florida or Harvey was coming to Houston, right? Or you live in Los Angeles and you know there's earthquakes and you don't have a plan. What is it you don't know? Like, like you're not stupid, you're not dumb, and you're not lazy. You're a bunch of entrepreneurs in a room that want to do something big. You would not come to this conference if you did not want to scale your business. The question was asked the other night, why do you want to scale? You all have to scale. You have to scale for this one reason right here. You need money. You need money, okay? Why do I need money? What don't I know about money? Why are people struggling with money? You should ask yourself these questions. Why are you coming up short on money? Is it what you know or what you don't know? How many of you know this saying, knowledge is? Okay, yeah, how many of you agree with that? How many of you agree knowledge is power? So look, if you don't have money and you have knowledge, maybe you have the wrong knowledge. Could the wrong knowledge be power over you? Right? See what I'm saying? So, like when you set your business up, how many of you set your business up? You, you know about uh, uh, the, the average entrepreneur, solo entrepreneur makes about 42,000 bucks a year and the average American makes 58. This guy left a job to make less money so he could say, hey, I work for myself. Me and Gary Vaynerchuk had this conversation. He's like, look, somebody's better off making 42 for themselves than making 42 for somebody else. I said, dude, ain't nobody better off making 42. Okay, see, see, this is what you need to understand. The first thing you gotta, you gotta decide. Now, Sean says he doesn't chase a number. I chase in a number. Why would you have a target on everything in life and not have one on money? Every athlete has a target. Right? Every professional has a target. Every department and every company, every division I have has a target. No target means what? What is your target, right? If I have no target, I'm successful. I will hit the zero target. A, guy, a guy's homeless out there. Hey, begging for food. Can you give me some food? Can you give me some food? I give him food. He's like, no, no, no. I don't really want the food. I really want the food. Just say it on the sign, bro. Give me a hundred. Just change the ask. But you got to have a target. You got to have a target. This is the secret of the successful people. This is what I've committed my life to doing. I told my mom when I was 16 years old, one day, one day I'm going to be successful. One day, one day I'm going to be successful. And one day I'm going to help a lot of people. I always say this, pay the price today so you can pay any price in the future. Pay the price now. Okay. Pay the price. My buddies were traveling, seeing the world, and I didn't have any of those experiences. I've had people tell me, hey, you market too much. You market too aggressively. Take me off your list. My office tells me we hit the list too much. I'm like, what's the list for? Hit the list. That's what it's for. There's eight, 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 eight billion people on planet Earth. Look, I've been ridiculed by my peers, by customers, and by competition. I've been judged for working too much, wanting too much, being too colorful, being inappropriate, insensitive, and too out there. I'm trying to figure it out. I've been threatened, I've been sued, I've been betrayed by friends, I've been ripped off, and I've been copied. 30 years, 30 years. 18 hour days, not, not eight hour days, not 10 hour days, not 12 hour days, 18 hour days. It's been 30 years, 30 years. It's probably going to be 30 years for you too. Doubt, uncertainty, insecurities, 
rejection, disappointment, judgment. It's going to be 30 years of it. Are you, are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to pay the price? If anybody thinks you're going to be successful without paying that price, you're wrong. You got to get up. You got to get out. The amount of time you spend outside your proximity or location where you sleep gives you a better chance of being successful. So get up, get out. Go meet the world head on, folks, no matter how bad it is. Okay, you got, you got reputation problems. You got, I feel bad problems. You got friend problems, you got money problems, whatever the problems are, okay? Try this, just get up and get out and go meet the world head on. Go meet whatever it is, okay? You gotta make up to somebody. You gotta apologize for something you've done. You gotta make up uh, the damage of, of years of neglect and, and maybe uh, betrayal. And look, I've done all that. I've had all those things where I screwed up over and over and over again. My reputation sucked. I was 20, between the ages of 15 and 25 years old. It was like I was doing everything I could just to damage, damage my reputation. Okay, if it made me look bad, I did it. So here today, I'm gonna spend 10 days, 14 days, something like that, up here with that view. You can fix anything. I'm proof that you can fix anything. Anything can be fixed. Anything can be fixed, but you gotta fix it. You gotta fix it. You can't just sweep it under the old rug. You gotta fix it. You gotta clean up the damage. You gotta pay the price, clean up your debts, do what you say you're gonna do. Become the most dependable person in your space. Become the go-to person. Oh, I can put that person on stage and know exactly what they're gonna get for me. I can put that person in the game and I know what play they're gonna run. I can put that person on the floor and I know they're gonna get it done. Be the go-to person. Okay, you don't need to be funny. You don't need to be entertaining all the time. You don't need to be the person they're talking about. You need to be the go-to person, folks. If you're gonna make mistakes in your life, make them fast, right? If you're gonna lose a deal, make them lose the deal fast. If you're not gonna make any money on a deal, make sure the deal's quick, right? How many made no money on a deal this month? But it took four hours. <laughs> That's stupid, man. You see, most of you in the room, unfortunately, you listen to the media so much, you think, you're, you think you're, you're, everything's good. You think you're fine, okay? Because the media has not exposed the reality on the middle class. They talk about poverty, and they talk about the rich people, and they never talk about the people in between. The people in between in this country suffer more than the people in poverty. People in poverty are actually taken care of. People in the middle are completely ignored. I'm talking about the people that make 200 grand a year and live up here and still don't have any money left over. They send their kids to school, they got two BMWs, they live in a nice house, they have air conditioned water and heat, right? And there's no money. So they send a little bit of money to a Keo account and they think, okay, we're gonna retire one day. You're gonna be old one day. By the time you get to use that money, you'll be so old, you won't wanna use it. The only thing that's gonna change anything for you and your family is like, hey man, what am I doing here? Okay? You don't need to go work in another industry. You take the habits you have right now to the restaurant business, the restaurant business will fail. Every business is in disruption right now. Everything is changed. You want to go do, you want to go trade Bitcoin? It's going to take a commitment. It's going to take ups and downs. Going to be a bunch of ups and downs in that crypto play. Everybody agree? Yeah. Okay. You want to go do the real estate game rather than a car game? I'm going to tell you something right now, man. If you don't bring commitment and discipline and, 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 and fortitude and persistence to the real estate game, you will get killed in the real estate game. There's no game that you're going to win at that doesn't require a commitment. Single biggest mistake I've made in my career was not spending money. It's what put me in a position to be able to buy real estate because I had money, but I had to buy the real estate. I had to use the money. Brad Lee made a comment the other day about money. Money is not to be saved and hoarded. Like, like it's no good if you don't use it. This is the problem with Bitcoin. It, it, how, when, do, when do I transact with it, right? I'm sitting on a million dollars worth of Bitcoin right now. I can't get rid of it fast enough. I can't go buy stuff with it. So until that, that, that situation is resolved, right? It's why people don't hoard gold anymore. You don't keep gold because you can't exchange it. Money is to be used. For those of you out there that are like complaining about the cost of anything, the truth is that's what that money's for. The only thing, the only purpose money has is to be used.
And, and I was scared that I couldn't produce more money. So every time I spent money, I complained about it. Today, I'm like, that's the biggest mistake I ever made. Should have been spending more money. Uh, it wouldn't have take, taken me 30 years. In the first five years, I should have borrowed money I didn't have, and I should have spent money that I did have, and I should have gone into debt to do it, to get my brand out there, to get it known. The mattress guy in your town did it. The car guy in your town did it. Whoever spent the most money, whoever, whoever put it all out there all the time, every day on every TV, radio, and the internet wins the battle. It's not the prettiest guy, okay? It's not, it's the guy that out advertises you, that outspends you. It takes courage to make money. Hey, a quick, uh, quick note out to all of you out there that believe that an open mind is important, which by the way, I agree with you. I agree an open mind's important. You know the old saying, the mind is like a parachute. It won't work if it's open. But I want you to add one piece to that. If that parachute is wide open, you're falling straight to the ground. You understand what I'm saying? If it doesn't open, if the mind doesn't open, you're in trouble. If it opens too wide, you're a dead man bouncing or a dead woman bouncing. My point to you is this, okay? Most people do actually have an open mind. The problem is many people, they have a mind that's wide open with no filters, no gates, no protection. You listen to everyone. You listen to everyone on Facebook, everyone on Instagram. You listen to your uncle, your aunt, your mom, your dad. When the mind's too open, you get too much data and you go into confusion. How important is it to have that team and, and to all those who are watching that are starting out their teams, what would be the advice that you would give them? Yeah, well, the, the, the whole solopreneur thing, I'm gonna do it by myself, I'm gonna work from home, that's, it, it's not even real. Like, I know it's popular, you see it on Instagram, and you think some guy's doing something on Instagram, he's not doing anything, dude. He posted, a, he posted an image of his car that he washes on Instagram, <laughs> okay? Okay, it might not even be his car, by the way, okay? He's rubbing out his car and posted somebody else's car. He posted a picture of Edwin's car as he passed up here in the hills, so. Uh, after he freaking mowed my lawn. So, um, what, what would I tell you? Dude, you gotta be on a team. I mean, like, like how, how are you going any place by yourself? You live on a planet with seven billion people. You're like, I hear people say all the time, I don't, I, you know, I'm an, extra, I'm an introvert and I, I don't like people. Do you live on planet Earth? Okay, kind of the wrong place to introvert. So, you know, pe people, pe I know people that can't swim, man. I'm like, two thirds of the planet is water. <laughs> Hey, jump in this pool. You might want to get your stroke zone, dog. I mean, there's a chance in your lifetime that you're going to need people and you might need a backstroke, right? You might, might need to be able to hold your breath at some point. So, so like, I don't understand why people aren't getting prepared. We live on a planet that is basically, it's got gravity on it. It's got an atmosphere. And there's one common thing, whether you're Chinese, Hispanic. I don't think Hispanic's even a, a group, is it? Not Latinos. Hispanic. Latinos, man. Okay. Okay. Sorry, man. Okay. You got blacks, you got whites, you got Italians, you got all these people, right? Koreans. You got, we got all these people, but the truth is, man, economics bind us all together. Okay. I go down to the grocery store and there's a, somebody from Korea in there. I'm trading money with that person. Okay. That, that is the exchange. You're on a team. Your team can be your team that has the goal they want to go get is to sell, hit a target. But part of your team is also the people you're selling to. Right. And part of your team is also another team is the community you live in. And another another team is your church, yeah. you know, and your family, man. These are all teams, right? And your job and my job, I mean, if you want to be all alive, all in the deal, your job is to keep all, you need to be a super champion of all these teams, right. not just one team. How many of you want to make more money? <laughs> Pay attention then. You can't make more money if you don't know what we're doing here. So the first thing is to decide, hey, am I in the right place? Those guys had to walk in that stadium last night and say, hey, we in the right place? Yeah, man. Okay. And then they probably said, man, we got a shot here. We got a chance to win a Super Bowl, right? You came to work today. This is not a Super Bowl, unless you want it to be. But I'm going to tell you something. If you don't get your life ready right now, if you don't start acting right now like you're in the Super Bowl, you're never going to make one anyway, even when you do make one. I mean, if you look at that kid last night, what's his name, uh, Nick, Nick Foles? He's been sitting on the sidelines for years, overlooked for years. What you do right now, every day, even if you hate your job, I promise you, promise you this will happen in your life. If you could learn how to embrace every moment like this is a Super Bowl, one day you're gonna get your shot.
you're gonna get your shot, but you're not, your, your shot will not show up if you're not ready. Cause even if you, even if it shows up, if you're not ready, you won't be able to see it. So you know oh, what yeah. I do? Every time I'm having trouble, every time I'm like, man, I don't think I can get to where I'm going. I just start looking at the top. I don't look at the bad facts. All I do is I start searching. Tell me about wealthy people, facts about wealthy people, anything. What are they doing? What are they buying? It just gets me out of my problem, right? It gets me to think bigger. You know, the, the, the first plane I bought, I bought this plane because I saw other wealthy people making moves. I'm not an irresponsible person, okay? Like, I have always been a very frugal person, but the frugal was hurting me, not helping me. So you live, what, what part of Mexico you live in? How rich you can get has something to do with who you're hanging with. How rich you can think has something to do with who you're hanging with, okay? How smart you are has something to do with your surroundings. If you hang out with dumb people, you're gonna end up dumb. If you hang out with junkies, you're gonna end up being a junkie. You hang out with criminals, I'm not talking about the people that go to jail. I'm talking about all the people at your office right now that cheat their employer and cheat themselves. You hang out with crim crims, you end up being a crim. If you wanna build a network, number one thing, commit to building a network. A network by definition is not, if you're building a new network, it's not the people you're already with. It's how do I add people to my network? So number one, you gotta commit to building a network. Number two, who do you want in the network? Who is it? Most of you just go for more people like you have already in your network. I want new people, new characters, new personalities, new thinking, new ideas. The old adage, if you're the smartest person in the room, you in the wrong room. And number three, when you start building this network up and you start meeting the people, okay, number two is who do you want to meet? Who? Who are you going to add to the network? You go 9,000 people in a room. You don't need to meet all 9,000. You need to meet maybe a list of 30 or 40 people. Who do you want to meet? Number three, when you meet them, focus on them, not on you. It shouldn't be, here's my card. I'm a chiropractor. This is what I do. Uh, can I give you an adjustment? It should be like, who are you? How can I help you? What are you doing? Where do you live? Okay. What projects are you working on? How can I help you? So I was a car salesman when I was 25 years old with an accounting degree. I was the only accounting degree car salesman in the state of Louisiana. I hated myself for it. I'm making three grand a month. Nobody would hire me as an accountant. One out of four jobs in, in, in Louisiana you couldn't get. One out of four people, 25% unemployment. And I just said, how do I go from three grand to four grand? That's all I want to know. But I started paying attention, okay? Who can get me that money? I don't have it. Who's got it? I needed shoes, I needed jeans, right? I needed a new shirt. I had these white shirts, I'm a car salesman. I need nice, clean, crisp white shirts. People believe in me. I need some training. I don't know how to talk to people. I hate sales. I hate it, still hate it today. I've made hundreds of millions of dollars providing sales of programs to corporations. I hate sales. So the fact that I hated it didn't mean I, I don't do it. Because you're only gonna be paid two ways your whole life. You will never be paid fairly, ever. So give up the whole, I'm not being paid fairly bullshit. You will never, ever be paid fairly. You're gonna be underpaid most of your life, and then one day if you're lucky, you'll be overpaid. I'm gonna tell you something, when I made four grand, that was the most important money that I've ever made in my entire life. No money has ever made me happier than that $1,000, because that $1,000 made me realize I can do anything. Single biggest mistake I've made in my career was not spending money. It's what put me in a position to be able to buy real estate, because I had money, but I had to buy the real estate. I had to use the money. Brad Lee made a comment the other day about money. Money is not to be saved and hoarded. Like, like it's no good if you don't use it. This is the problem with Bitcoin. It, it, how, when, do, when do I transact with it, right? I'm sitting on a million dollars worth of Bitcoin right now. I can't get rid of it fast enough. I can't go buy stuff with it. So until that, that, that situation is resolved, right? It's why people don't hoard gold anymore. You don't keep gold because you can't exchange it. Money is to be used. For those of you out there that are like complaining about the cost of anything, the truth is that's what that money's for. The only thing, the only purpose money has is to be used. And, and I was scared that I couldn't produce more money. So every time I spent money, I complained about it. 
Today, I'm like, that's the biggest mistake I ever made. We should have been spending more money. Uh, it wouldn't have take, taken me 30 years. In the first five years, I should have borrowed money I didn't have, and I should have spent money that I did have, and I should have gone into debt to do it, to get my brand out there, to get it known. The mattress guy in your town did it. The car guy in your town did it. Whoever spent the most money, whoever, whoever put it all out there all the time, every day on every TV, radio, and the internet wins the battle. It's not the prettiest guy, okay? It's not. It's the guy that out advertises you, that outspends you. It takes courage to make money. And I said to her, I said, look, the thing that I do at my company that is very unusual is that we are completely unreasonable without reason, without, we don't use, yes, I'm logical, okay, yes, I'm a sane person, but when it comes to achieving a target, we, we do it with, like, we abandon reason and logic. We don't talk about, yeah, but, we never start, yeah, but, or no, we can't, or we couldn't because, or it didn't happen because. Any, anytime you're talking, anytime you're making sense of why something didn't work, we don't have the budget, we can't do that because, yeah, but we're different, you are being reasonable. The great things that have happened on this planet and continue to happen are because people are unreasonable. They literally abandon reason and logic. They defy the universe. Now, if you look around, if you're a logical person, if you're a person that has to make sense of it beforehand, then spend some time looking around the universe, look at nature, look at all the things that are done every day that literally defy gravity, defy possibility, defy physics. It's all over the place if you need to be reasonable. Now, in my case, I don't need to be reasonable because there's enough cases of super successful people doing things that are amazing, whether it was a manufacturing, a new product, or whether it was Steve Jobs coming back to Apple and turning that company around. Every day, every day, look at Amazon. Look what Amazon has done. Okay, now you look at it and you're like, dude, that's a no-brainer. Make, every, make all products available online. <laughs> Now it's a no-brainer. Now it's like, it's so logical. Look at Velcro. Velcro was like, God, I, I should have thought of that. See, but beforehand, it was completely out of reason that you could stick things together uh, because they scratch one another. You understand what I'm saying? So look, this is what I want you to try. Try this in your life. It's gonna be very difficult. It's one of the most difficult things I do is being unreasonable because all the people I'm surrounded by are trying to make sense of why they can't do something. Quit making sense of why you can't do something and become unreasonable until you do do something. What are you gonna do when you wake up and you feel lost, you feel less than, you feel, you feel a sense of uh, either depression or despair and no direction? What I do is this, I show up. I show up, man. A buddy of mine told me when I was at the at the at the at a low, super low point in my life. He said, "Hey, man, show up even if your life's if your eyes are bleeding and your life is low. Show up anyway. Show up. Bigger is better. How many agree with this? Okay. If you can live on nine hundred grand, the only people that won't go to nine million are the people that are selfish." Unselfish people grow their businesses. Selfish people don't. Okay, if you're taking notes, if you're gonna walk away with something today, I'm talking to the able people here. Give me the name of a great company that has seven employees. I'm waiting. Give me the name of a great company that doesn't spend a load of money on advertising. Who is this company? Tell me, give me one name. One name of any company that's great. This small. See, 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 you, you built a business on a fantasy, right? Like, I'm, I'm gonna get a state form, I'm gonna get a state form, I'm gonna get an all state company, I'm gonna I'm 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 be an all state guy, and I'm gonna make 900 grand a year. You're selfish, folks. See, see what I'm saying about the selfish person makes what they need, the unselfish person says, I'm gonna make more than I need. I've been lost most of my life, literally the first 45 years of my life. The first probably 51 years of my life, first 45 years for sure, I was completely lost. And uh, 
somewhere between 45 and 51, I started figuring out, okay, what am I doing? I started sorting my life out. I started getting some, started doing some courses that really, really made a difference in my life. I've always been in a self-improvement my whole life. And, uh, but it wasn't until I was about 45 that I really started discovering information that could make me more confident, me more sure. You know, when I was 25 years old, I was a young salesperson and I didn't like sales and, and, I, and I got educated on how to sell and I became very, very good at it. Um, I started to understand the process, the customer, the objections, the rebuttals, how to follow up, how to handle the rejection and the disappointment, the discourage, how to get over it. But that didn't help me become more confident in me as a person, as an individual. I was making money. By the time I was 31, I had a couple businesses. They were making money. Probably had, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars saved when I was 30, 31 years old, because I was starting to make a little money, right? By the time I'm 33, I got a, probably a million dollars in a bank. I still didn't feel good about myself. I had this nagging, nagging, like, sense of desperation, anxiety, depression, uncertainty, a lack of confidence. And when I started working on me spiritually, that's, that's, when, that's when at 45, 46, 47 years old, that's when everything changed for me. Like everything, all the expansion, the, the confidence, the getting out in the world, the maybe a little better communicating than I was doing. I'm not perfect at it by any means now. And I started getting more certainty about who I am, what I am, where I'm going, and why I'm here. Like, if you don't figure those things out, no amount of money, no amount of money in the world will, will fill you up. No, the private planes won't, the fancy cars. You have to know where you're going. How do you do this? I started with one employee. His name was Grant Cardone. I knew him, and so I hired him. <laughs> right? He passed a drug test. I believed in him. And for 15 years, I was one guy. And then one day I woke up, a guy actually, a, a mentor of mine said, look, you can't scale with just yourself. You gotta start building a business here. If you're gonna have a real business, you need employees, you need people. You need to be willing to hire people. And I'm like, man, but I'm scared. They cost money. He's like, not making sales. One, two, three, four, these empty desks. That's what's costing me money. Okay, that's what's costing you money. Staying small is costing you money. Think bigger, okay? All this costs money. I have failures here. I have disappointments. I have discouragements. I have people that work here for a little while and they quit. But you're not going to get big by yourself. If, if you ask me to coach your business, I'm not going to think about how to hold on to what you did last year. That's what most people right now are thinking here in March. In January, you're like, this is going to be a great year. By March, you're like, man, I just want to do what we did last year. If we just do, you're starting to make sense. You're becoming reasonable. Okay, I'm telling you that because this is what your people do too. Okay, your people, the people that you hire, they make sense of how to make 48 grand a year. And if you have people in your company that are trying to make sense of how to make 48 grand a year, you got a company that's going to die. Toys R Us filed bankruptcy this week. iHeartRadio, the biggest radio station in the world filed for bankruptcy this week. There's gonna be massive disruption in the marketplace. Why? Because these companies thought about, they, they, kept, they kept having trophies about what they had rather than what, what they could get. Who's got money? Who's qualified to buy? How can I get their attention? How can I tell them what I want from them? Okay, how fast can I get to the marketplace? Fast, speed is the new big. You can do more. You can do more than you ever imagined. I was broke at 25 years old. Broke, okay? Every two years I get one of these cars. The people at Rolls Royce like, hey, we wanna send you another one of those cars, okay? How you want it, how you want to dress, what color you want it? Like it's crazy. It's crazy the life I'm living right now. We did a, we did a conference, it was 10,000 people in the room and another 10,000 people online. All of them paid to be there. I remember when I couldn't get two people to show up at a party in high school because I was so disliked. You can do more than you think you can, is my message to you today. You will live longer than you think, I promise you, okay? You can do more than you think you can. If you're not gonna work, like a 10 hour day is a short day for me. I hear more people promoting this four hour idea. 
okay? Mm -hmm. Like Tim Ferriss, I'll just call him out right now. It is complete bunk. It is complete you cannot skip, you cannot outsource everything. This idea that you're going to be a solopreneur, outsource or work four hours or part time. You guys try to do the part time thing. You will have full time problems forever for the end of, to the end of your life. Not only will you have problems because you're selfish if you're trying to do a four hour work week. You're selfish. You're thinking only about yourself. If you don't scale and hire people, you're also selfish. You're trying to manage money rather than saying, hey, I have a great message. Like You, you have an obligation, man, mm -hmm. to get out there and help people. So I don't know how to do 10 hours. I know, how to, I, know I need six to seven, maybe eight hours of sleep a day. The question is, how am I going to best utilize my other 16 hours with my family, as a father, as a community leader, as somebody that's interested in changing the conditions around me, right? And how can I use that phone mm -hmm. to maximize those 16 hours? And how can I spend time with my kids that actually adds value to my business, right? How can I create a studio so me and my wife can work together on Wednesdays? Like everything that we do here is about my life so that I'm dropping stuff into my life bucket. My work gets dropped in here so it's like, Everything I do, I go on a trip, I go look at real estate, I do an interview, mm -hmm. uh, I, I set up a, a house with, uh, in Deer Valley for a month, I have people come over, investors, I look at real estate, everything is basically, I'm, 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 I'm what is it? Uh, uh, You're churning. Yeah, exactly, inside a soup, right? right? I'm making a meal called my life. And that's Love what that. I would tell people to do, quit thinking about how little you can do and start thinking about how much, how much, how many different things can I do in the same day? I'm gonna save money. This is what you hear. If you look on the internet, how do I make money? First thing you gotta do is you gotta save money. What do you hear the politicians say? The middle class, I'm here to save it. What if there is no middle class and it was just made up to keep the people civil? See, 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 that, that's how you're gonna play this game. You gotta be available. People have to know you. Don't talk to strangers. Strangers got everything you want, man. Everything you want, a stranger's got it. Shit, your friends ain't got nothing. Right? If it's up to your friends, you're done. You're, done. you're like, oh, my friends are broke. I'm 25 years old. Everybody around me was broke, okay? My mama was scared. Every time, my mama, Tuesday, Tuesday, she's clipping coupons. That was the reason to get the newspaper. Shit, the coupons are coming. She would sit there and clip them, man. She had them in the little box. I learned that for, for 16 years. I watched my mom do that. For 16 years, my mom would tell me, hey, Grant, turn those lights off. Turn those lights off. Me and my twin brother, turn those lights off. From across the house, she could hear me walk out of my bedroom 75 feet away and say, hey, turn those damn lights off. I told you, okay? Twin brothers, okay? I'm, I'm 16 years old, my twin brother. My mom said, when you guys go pee, do it together. <laughs> Saves water, saves water, right? Okay, when my mom fed me, cause my mom, I had a great mom. Unbelievable. How many of you had great parents? Give, you, give your parents a great hand, huh? Good. Hey, just because they were great parents doesn't mean they weren't confused, right? Cause my mama was confused, man. My mom did not know how to make money. She had no education. She had no ability. She had never held a job. She did not know how to get money. So what she had to do was protect the little bit of money she had. Sell or be sold. She was sold on conservation. Reduce risk. Don't spend. Contract. Protect it. Defend it. You understand? Diversify. Have a lot of little bets all over the place, okay? Lots of little bets. You should never have a lot of bets all over the place until you're extremely wealthy. When you're trying to get wealthy, you want to literally, you want to go all in and it not be a bet. You need to know the space so well that you're like, I know for sure this is going to work. What do you know will pay you every time? Make decisions quickly so that I can sell things quickly. Because if you do it, if you do it, if you do it a certain way, you give yourself permission to ask other people to do the same thing. It's built-in ethics. Uh, at the end of the last year, on December the 4th, 13th or 14th, Captain Ryan's in a room. I said, dude, we're gonna buy a plane by the end of the year. Okay, okay, I'm gonna wipe out my tax bill. I'm gonna buy a damn plane and we're gonna wipe it out. Okay, I bought a plane in less than nine days. Brand new plane in nine days. 
The guy at Gulfstream says, dude, nobody does this. Most people take nine months. Some people take nine years. They, nine days, we bought the plane. Bought it, shopped it, bought it, closed it. He's like, nobody does that. It's ridiculous. Huge purchase, big purchase. Typically a very long cycle, a lot of, lot of shopping. Guarantee you that decision that quickly will make me a lot of money. You understand why? That's how I make decisions, man. So what do I expect you guys to make decisions the same way? I spent 50 million bucks in 90 minutes and you guys take nine months to spend six grand. Make decisions quick. Make decisions as fast as you can. Stay certain. You can get new money. Everybody agree? See, when I do that in my own life, I can press you to do the same thing. I've given myself permission and in this universe, given myself permission to push people to do things faster. If you take a long time to do things, your buyer will then be allowed to take a long time to do things. You shop a second place, a third place, a fourth place, a fifth place, a sixth place, guess what? They will too. You gotta get a best deal because your daddy taught you to get a good deal, never be taken advantage of, shop two and three places, get your best discount, it's gotta be on sale. Then guess what? Every customer you have is gonna what? Give me a deal, man, give me a deal, man, give me a deal, man, okay? Your worst customers are the ones you give the best deal to. Never can make them happy. They want something, oh, give me something extra, give me something else, the mooch. Never satisfied, right or wrong? Because you guys are mooches. You guys are mooches. Just be honest, man. You can't fix what you deny. You're a mooch, they're gonna be a mooch. They're cheap, they're gonna be cheap. You're cheap, they're gonna be cheap. You take a long time, they're gonna take a long time. You shop four or five places, they're gonna do the same thing. You need more information, they're gonna do the same thing. You gotta have your wife involved, they're gonna do the same thing. Everybody's trying to go out there and not sell. You guys are all trying to like, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be talented. Talent does not win. I know a whole bunch of guys less talented than me that beat me for years. They beat me because they got exposure in the marketplace. Can you name some of those names? Yeah, it, just in different sectors. Okay. In real estate, okay? I got a, there's a group that, that, that they went out and bought 140,000 units. Um, you know, I got 4,500. 4, they're, they're not as good. They, they make, take a lot of shortcuts. They don't take care of the tenant as well as I do, but they thought way bigger than I did. So, um, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's in different spaces. There was an automotive space that I was in for years. I was the leader in the automotive space, me and another guy constantly combating, right? He had a garbage product. He sold for less than I did. He... He scaled better than I did. Mm -hmm. He beat me at the scale game. So you can't, see a lot of people say, look, look, man, Steve Jobs started his business in a garage. Uh, the, the uh, I think Cadillac's got a commercial where the Cadillac was created in a garage. Uh, who else? Bill Gates mm -hmm. started his business in a garage. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg started Facebook in a, in a dorm. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, oh my God, man, I can do this from home. None of those companies got big when they stayed in the garage of the dorm. Marky Z didn't make it until he moved to Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and built a team, okay? Google didn't become Google until they had a campus in Silicon Valley and they scaled to tens of thousands of employees. So you have to scale to be great. So would you say then for the average entrepreneur out there as they are, as they're growing their business, getting those sales, they should definitely be setting some of that income aside you should, you to should outsource? Be, yeah, you should not be thinking about what you can live on, right? Oh, I made eight grand this month, man. All of it's net profit. All that money should be reinvested in people. So that, that's why people think incorrectly. That's why I always go back to this argument about, look, the solopreneur is a selfish, mm -hmm. almost like a little selfish child, right? I'm going to go out. I left my job. I was making 90 grand. Now I'm going to, me and Gary Vaynerchuk had this conversation. Mm -hmm. I was making 90 grand. Now I'm going to work for myself and make 90 grand. And Gary's like, well, yeah, the guy's better off. The guy's better off working for himself for 90 grand than working for somebody else. And I'm like, dude, nobody's better off working for 90 grand. You can't live on 90 grand. Not today you can't. No, anywhere in the America. There's nowhere in America. You live for 90 grand in, in Miami, you're, you're going to have $12,000 before taxes. Mm -hmm left over at the end of the year if you don't shop at Whole Foods. So the, the point of that is, if you were working for 90,000 for a company and then you go work for yourself for 90,000, 
You should be taking that money and buying a secretary, buying a receptionist, buying scale, mm-hmm. buying a sales team, reinvesting money. You should not have any money left over at 90 grand. All of it should be going to be poured back into the business to scale out. I'll tell you what he said, okay? LeBron shows up. This dude comes in 15 minutes before practice, and LeBron gives him that look like, hey, dude, what, what's going on here? He's like, what do you mean I'm 15 minutes early? He's like, should have been here an hour ago. And, and, and when he says that to this dude, the guy knows LeBron's been there for two hours. So all I, all I ask you to do, like here's a guy, probably the best that's ever walked out on a basketball court, short of Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> but both of them had one thing in common, they worked, okay? It wasn't about their, just their talent, it was about their work ethic. People knew them for their work ethic. So just ask yourself this week, do people know you for your work ethic? Are people, are people like, man, you work hard? Are people actually commenting about you showing up early and staying late? Because if they're not, then you're just, you're just blending in with everybody else's work ethic. At the end of the day, talent will not win the game. It is work ethic that will win the game. So when I saw this, I'm like, here's a guy, top of his game, he's got all the money you could possibly, he could never spend all his money. Impossible, he'll be a billionaire. Okay, and he's showing up two hours early to make sure he plays the game, to make sure he's in physical condition, to make sure that he can stay in the game long past it. He doesn't even need it. He's got all his rings. I got to tell you, I, got, I, I was so inspired by it because I got a bunch of partners. I got guys that I do business with. I got one of them in particular that I'm having some problems with. He told me, man, if I had your money, dude, I would retire. He said it to me over and over, and I hadn't been listening to it enough to, to understand he wants to go lay down. Okay, you cannot run, what's that thing called you did? You can't do an Iron Man with that attitude. Nope. Don't know why you'd want to do an Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, if you could do an Iron Man and then take that and add it to your, to your, to your career, to the, the, the longevity of your career, you know, because look, it's going to be five years from now, 10 years from now, it's going to be 20 years, you're going to look back and say, and the marketplace is going to reward whatever you do every day. I'm in a lot of battles every day that nobody sees. I mean, these are, some of these battles are brutal, man. Like, brutal. like, like, like. There's some things. It doesn't matter how many people you have around. You could have 85 employees, another 150 some other place. You could be married, have kids. There are so many things that a person, if you're in the game all the way, you will have to do by yourself. You're gonna die by yourself. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't matter how many people you get around. Do there's some things you gotta. You got to confront your fears by yourself. You got to confront your doubts by yourself. Mm, like mm-hmm. that's the stuff that I'm doing every day. So I'm stringing a lot of futures. I got a lot of games going on all the time. I got a lot of games I want to win at. Half of them I lose, half of them I win, but I'm going to fight. Like like I, I have a tremendous, I don't have the flight. Fight or flight. I have the fight. I'm a fighter, I'm a fighter. Like I've really trained the fighter because mm-hmm. I remember being bullied as a kid and I didn't like it. So. You know, I'm a fighter. I'm in there figuring out the fight. Like I, I, all this stuff that I do all the time, the webinar, I do one, I've done three webinars in 22 days. Nobody's done that. Nobody's ever done bang, 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 bang. Two, two are free. The third one we sell, like, I mean, super successful. These are best selling multi-million dollar webinars on, out of an idea. While I'm doing that, I'm negotiating a $160 million sale, a $125 million refinance. Yep. A hundred and sixty million dollar purchase. We started our fourth fund, dude. Just like, how do you do it? The more you guys get going on, the better you're gonna like the game. I'm telling you, You, you're confused, man. You want more activity. You want more threats. You don't want less. You guys slow down, y'all. When you slow down, the environment becomes threatening. When you speed up, it becomes your environment. This car right here. This Rolls Royce Wraith with. Uh, magic, the magic, astrological zodiac sign built into the ceiling with little sparkles. The damn thing you could ever buy in your life is a big, expensive luxury car. In fact, okay, in my rant today, I want to share with you one of the things that I did smart in my life was I never bought these exotic cars that everybody seems to go out and buy as soon as they make a little money. What I did was this, I waited, I waited, and I waited to ever do a dumb thing like this, dumb, one of the dumbest things I ever bought in my damn life, okay? I waited 
until, number one, I didn't have to buy one, and number two, until it didn't matter. I just got my financial statement in three months, the first three months of this year compared to last year, a double. A double. You understand what a double is? A double means I can do stupid shit now, okay? Look, once you make enough money to where you can blow $461,000 and it don't matter, then go do it, okay? Until then, until then, do not waste your money. I'm sorry, this car was only $384,000. I didn't want to exaggerate to you, but I think they added some stuff to this bad boy. So look, until then, until then, until then, don't waste your money on watches and cars and, and Brioni suits, okay? It's ridiculous. You guys that are buying $1,200 shoes, you guys that are buying $200,000 cars, you guys that are spending money on homes, no offense, but just you don't need an expensive house. You don't need a country club yet. What you need is paper. You need money, baby. You need net worth. You need passive income. You need flows, baby. Flows and flows and flows. You don't need a Rolls Royce. Fear is the great indicator. Sooner or later, you will experience fear when you start taking new actions at new levels. In fact, if you aren't, then you're probably not doing enough of the right things. Fear isn't bad or something to be avoided. Conversely, it's something you want to seek and then to embrace. Fear is actually a sign that you're doing what is needed to move in the right direction. What is fear anyway? I mean, really, does it even exist? Is it real? I know it feels real when you're experiencing it, but admit it, most of the time, what you fear doesn't even occur. Fear, for the most part, is provoked by emotions not rational thinking. Chances are that when you were a child, you found fear in irrational things. The boogeyman under the bed, for example. Adults have their own boogeyman. The unknown, rejection, failure, fear of success, and on and on. For example, if you're afraid to call a client, then it's that sign that you should call that client. Fear of speaking with the boss is an indication you should march into his office and ask for a moment of his time. Everyone, everyone experiences fear on some level. Fear doesn't just tell you what to do, it also tells you when to do it. Ask yourself, what time is it at any point in the day? And the answer is always the same. The time is now. The time is always now. And when you experience fear, it's a sign that the best time to take action is at that very moment. Now, the only thing that will make a difference in that moment of fear is action. Failure comes in many forms. It occurs whether you act or you don't act. Regardless of the outcome, I would say it's far preferable to fail while doing something than to fail by over-preparing while someone else walks up and scoops up your dreams. Fear is a sign to do whatever it is you fear and do it quickly. I grew up in Lake Charles, Louisiana. For those of you who don't know my story, and my dad, uh, my dad was... Uh, he had five kids, wife, he was dedicated and committed to being the provider for his family, like many of you are. How many of you provide for your family? Probably want to do a good job at it. My dad wanted to do a good job at it. So my dad died when I was 10 years old. He had, he had owned a, a life insurance company. He actually started a life insurance company. Uh, it was taken from his, him and a partner. It was taken from him at the age of, uh, I guess he was 42 years old. 42 mm -hmm. years old, he's got five kids, he's got a wife to take care of and no job. How many have been in transition before? Yeah, so 42, a lot of obligation now, starting to move into the middle class. 42 years old, he's got, a, he's got twin boys coming. They didn't plan us. You know, good Catholic family, doing the planning. Every five years, we'd ha they'd have a baby. So he was planning, you could tell, like, like when I look back in, my, in his life today, this is a long answer to a short question, but like, like you guys, you guys need to figure out your, 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 why you're going to do whatever you're going to do. My dad knew why he was going to do what he was going to do, but my dad didn't think big enough. It's, 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 it's a, it's a, uh, uh, I, I got two things for my dad. One, every day he worked, he was up early, he stayed late. He's in transition between 42 and 52. He's in transition in his life, right? He's having to go from life insurance company, big dream, company gets stolen away from him. He's like, what am I doing, right? This is the story of the middle class right here. This, this is called gravity. This is uh, yesterday's Miami bridge falling. And everybody's like, I can't believe that happened. Structures fall, folks. So this is what I learned from my dad. My mom had to sell a dream house that was paid for in cash. My dad bought a dream house a year and a half before he, bought, uh, before he died. 
we all went in, celebrated. Oh, my God, this is unbelievable. This is crazy. This is great. We made it to the middle class. My dad dies. My mom has to sell the house a week, uh, 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 literally a week after my dad dies. When she should have been grieving, she was having to sell this dream house. You understand what I'm saying? This is what I learned when I was 10 years old. Man, life is short. Okay? My dad didn't provide. He, did, he worked hard, but he didn't have enough. Because if he had enough, my mom would not have had to sell the dream house. Everybody agree with that? Okay. My mom did not know how to produce new income, so my mom had to go into conservation. So when you ask me the question, how'd you start? I started with the wrong data. Okay, I started with the wrong data. And the data was, hey, life is short, something bad's gonna happen, all that's true. But if you could outproduce, if you could produce enough income, you could start solving some of these problems, like indestructible income. Who do you work with, live with, hang with? that's causing you to put a break when you accelerate. This is a huge issue, okay? This is a mental issue, totally mental, totally about who's playing in your park, in your business park. Who's telling you? Oh, by the way, it could be somebody you sleep with, could be, it could be the information your kids are bringing from school, it could be your mom and dad, it could be all those. It could be the paper you're reading, the Instagram you're watching, the Facebook you're looking at. It could be all that. You know, you get advice from me and you, and you go flip over to Dave Ramsey, you're going to see this conflict. Like, okay, Grant's using debt, Dave's not. Who's right? So pick somebody and go deep with that person. We, if you're going to pick a mentor, one of the biggest questions I get is, who, like, how do I pick a mentor? You, already, you gotta get rid of mentors. You guys already have too many. Y'all listen to everybody. An open mind is not always a good thing. When, when, a parachute, when a parachute opens like this, we're good. A wide open mind means this. I take information from anybody and everybody. What you wanna do is like this. Like You wanna run the race with blinders on. Get your data. If I have a wrong piece of data that I'm stable on, I'm probably gonna be more effective than a right piece of data that I'm unsure about. When I started my business, I'd get money and I'd save it. I'd get money and I'd save it. I'd get money and I'd save it. And I didn't spend money in marketing and branding. So when I was writing the 10X rule, I'm like, dude, why am I not bigger than I'm? I've been busting my ass, working mm -hmm. so hard. I've been pushing and shoving. I have the best products of any anybody in my space. I know I have the biggest, the biggest platform of products and the best products. Mm -hmm. Why, why, why are other guys kicking my ass? Yep. And I'm like, dude, you, you haven't reinvested the money in marketing and branding, right? I was not spending money. I look at the mattress guy in Boston. I look mm -hmm. at the car dealer mm -hmm. in Boston. Herb Chambers outspends yeah. everybody. Crushes. The, the, the mattress guy outspends everybody. Mm -hmm. the, my, the my pillow guy on, mm -hmm. on TV, he, he, who knows what he spends? He might spend $100 million a year in advertising to get a billion dollars. And I'm like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. You didn't market and you didn't advertise. So this month, we'll spend probably a million dollars on advertising. On advertising. My whole life, I've been told, be yourself. Be yourself. Just be yourself, Grant. Still today, on the second half of my life, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that means to be myself. In fact, I would tell you it's probably bad advice. You have to, you have to become someone else before you even discover who you really are. I promise you this is true. You're gonna have to become someone else. The real you, and you don't know that person yet. He's, he, he or she's been overeducated or undereducated. One of the two, it's not nothing, not, you didn't get the perfect amount of education to actually become who you are because colleges and the school systems don't teach you how to find and discover the real you. I've spent, I don't know, 30 years of my life just, just stripping away at the parts of me that aren't me. The poor Louisiana boy, the middle class boy, the I gotta save all my money boy, the, um, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I can't trust people. Stay tight, stay close, stay small. Don't get too big, don't get too much attention. I had to strip all that boy away. By the way, there's been hundreds of layers of false information, wrong information, incorrect data, uh, 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 assumed identities, by the way. Dude, I, I, was an, I was operating like a junkie and an alcoholic for years, told 
that alcoholism and drug addiction ran in my family and I somehow adopted this, just be yourself. See, if I was still just being myself, whatever that means, I'd still be a junkie in Lake Charles, Louisiana, but I'm not, okay? I decided to become the me I'm supposed to be. The, the, the length of time between the idea and the execution is gonna determine how much money you guys make. Get out of maybe. Stay out of maybe land. If you can get your customer to maybe, that's good. You guys need to stay out of maybe land. Maybe land is where doubt lives. Doubt slows down the organization. Oh God, what do I do? First time I met Jared, Jared had been in my office three or four weeks working. First time I met him, I walked up, who are you, man? I'm Jared. What are you doing, Jared? I'm making a list. I said, dude, I don't pay you to make a list, make a call. Okay, you had an idea to come work for me? Pick up the phone and call somebody because that list will not pay you. The only thing that's gonna pay you is the call, right? We don't spend enough time in my company planning. So this, this, is, what ha this is what happens at, at our company, okay? <clears throat> and I'm not, look, we don't do everything right there. Most of the time, this is what happens. I have an idea. Okay, we got a lot, I, got, I got a lot of ideas. How many of you got a lot of ideas? Okay, that idea is only as good as you can monetize that idea. Otherwise, it's worth nothing. The faster I can monetize this idea, the better that idea is. How many agree with that? So I go from idea to monetization. We're gonna be going over this later today. This is what you do. You go from an idea to planning. I go with an idea, landing page, buy a button, put a price on it, not even a picture of a product. So how long is it taking you to go from an idea to monetization? And by the way, how many people are involved? There was two people involved. We have 85 people at my company. I didn't involve anybody else. The more people you involved, if you're taking notes, the more people you involved, the longer it is going to take to get to a, a, deliver, a deliverable product. I don't need more ideas. I need execution. Planning, not production. You're spending time planning, thinking, ideas, buying. Get everybody's input. I want everybody to feel good about it. Dude, I don't, I don't care about any of that. I didn't check with anybody, okay? I can be wrong on my own, I don't, right? I don't, need, I don't need to spend time and be wrong. Let me just get to wrong as fast as I can. Dude, you, need, you need to go get money. Like, that, like you don't have to go like do that. a job to get money. You need to go connect with money. Like, you need, you need to sit down and understand what kind of money you're looking for. You guys, all of you out there following your heart and the thing that you're good at and the thing you love, it's costing you freedom. Oh, man, I'm a good photographer, man. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, so what? What if it doesn't pay anything? What if you're good at milking cows? Ain't nobody paying for milk anymore. But I'm so good at it. Oh, yeah. It. I love it. Okay, so you're good at, you're good at, what's that second job you got? Uh, teaching Spanish and English. Yeah, man, it's a hard deal to scale, bro. Like, like I, you know, you're selling time for money. You're trading yeah. time for money. Yeah. So if yeah, I were you, I'd go be a that. nanny to rich people. Teach my kids how to speak Chinese, man. I'll pay, I'll pay 50 bucks an hour for that. What are, the, what are those people paying you? Oh, by the way, I'll give you five hours twice a week. What do you get for a class right now? No, and now, like, here it's more or less, like, $15, $20. Yeah, exactly, because you're doing it to the wrong public. You need to go to somebody that's got yeah. a, that, that wants to learn, and, 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 and you know, you got to figure out, first of all, you got to do the calculation. You guys need to start doing calculations, financial calculations. There is nothing wrong with follow the money. Who's got the money, man? That's that T-shirt. Who's got my damn money? Right? Who oh, can yeah. pay you $100 an hour, bro? You're just calling on the wrong people, folks. Five grand is a doable deal. How do I do it? It's $412 a month. Okay? I got to go steal the money. I can steal 5,000. You could steal five grand from me and I wouldn't even know it's going to be like. If you could add 5,000 to that and earn 20%, it'd be worth a million 125. If you can do this at 10%, it'd be worth 320. Some of you small thinkers out there be like, dude, I'll take the 320. How do I get 10 and how do I get 20? You guys have figured this out. You're like, shit, 
If the play is big enough, dude, I'll figure that out. Everybody agree? See, see what I just, sh I shifted your mind by giving you a target. I don't go to target, I get targets and I keep targets and I refresh the target. And the target is I wanna be a millionaire. But over the period of time, I got 20 years by the way, what would pay me 20% a year over 20 years? And that is when your boy GC got rich. I didn't get rich speaking. I didn't get rich selling books. I got rich shopping real estate. 30 years old, shopping every weekend, dude, every weekend. All I did between 25 and 30 years old was make money, make money, make money, and push it aside, push it aside, push it aside. Even when, in the first years, when I was not, watch this, even when I was not 25 years old, five grand, boom, next year, five grand, boom. Next year, five grand, boom. Guess what, next year, oh, by the way, this money's sitting dead in the bank. It's not, not earning anything, it's, it's, in a, it's in a holy account. Holy means, okay, I'm gonna put a hole in your face if you touch my money. Nobody could get this money. This is a like sacred account, okay, you with me? 28, oh wow man, I could add a little bit. Maybe there's more money. 29, what am I doing right here? Okay, one, two, three, four, boom, I got $25,000 sitting in an account. It wasn't a million dollars, and I'm five years into the plan. But when I was ready to start investing money, I started doing my homework, 30 years old. Homework, shopping properties, 31. Homework, shopping properties, 32. I'm not buying cars. You guys are buying cars, flying on jet charters, showing off, going on vacations. All I'm doing is stacking paper. Guess what happens? I have five years of, of putting five grand away, Next thing you know, I had $25,000 to add to my $25,000. Next year, I'm making more money. I got $25,000. You see what I'm doing? I'm stacking dough and looking for 20%. I know there's a 20% play out there. Some of this money was sitting in the bank. This is years and years ago where the bank was paying me six or seven or eight. It didn't matter. That's not the target. The target is to get to one million. Remember this? And let's open up the calls, okay? Your job is to find a vehicle that can pay you 20% a year. Might be a business, might be the business you're in. It might be to buy advertising for the business or brand you're in. For me, it was this. I'm gonna buy real estate that over long periods of time, I will earn cash flow, okay? That's how the real estate works. I put $25,000 in a deal. That deal is probably gonna pay me 10% a year. You said, yeah, but Grant, you said, what'd you say, Grant, what'd you say? 20%, Grant, that's what you said. Yeah, I know what I said. This ain't Eddie, okay? Now, how much do I have? I could reinvest that money back in the deal. The next year, I have $27,500. I earn 10% on that. That's $27,50 or something like that. I reinvest that. Now, I got $30,000 in the deal. Hey, but what you don't know is the, the rent on this property as I own it over 20 years, 2038 will dispose of this thing. The rent is going up. As I'm adding money, the rent's going up and maybe this goes from 10% a year. By the time I sell, I want it to be at 20%, okay? My average deal has paid me over 30% a year. So when you start taking money and start compounding it like that, for long periods of time. The trick is long periods of time. If you study the most successful people that you know in any business, the Warren Buffetts in finance, the LeBron James in basketball, you, you just start studying them. I've been studying them since, I was, since my dad died. My dad died when I was 10 years old and I needed mentors. And you can't go get another dad. My uncles, they, weren't, they, they had their own life going on so they, they couldn't mentor me. So I was like, well, who are these people? And we, we all have examples. The problem today in America is the example, it's getting more and more average. It's, it, we're, we're becoming an epidemic of mediocrity. So if you study the really, really, you know, exuberantly successful people, they're gonna have some traits in common. 
obsessed. If you've ever met a great sales manager, great salesperson, great used car manager, great finance manager, they're obsessed. They read, study, learn, eat it, you know, they're obsessed people. See, obsession in our culture, though, is not a good thing. If you, it, when you hear the word obsession, you start thinking a guy's got a problem, obsessive compulsive disorder. Look, if you're not getting labeled, if people are not labeling you in society as a freak case, then you're not successful. Whatever goal you want, let's say you have a financial goal, even though that's just one goal. You know, you'd have life, spiritual, your family, your marriage. How much action do you need to take? If you want to become a millionaire, number one, you have to decide to become a multimillionaire. You're going to miscalculate the zeros, and this is what the 10X rule was. The 10X rule was a multiplier. You must multiply in order to add. You have to learn how to do something a lot of times to ever get good at it. For Sabrina to be good at what, what are those things you do? Cartwheels? She's going to do thousands, tens of thousands of cartwheels to finally be able to stay on one line. So, so, same thing for the ballerina. Same thing for LeBron. I have to do something 10,000 times before I'll ever make a billion dollars or 100 million or 10 million. You got to get great at it, folks. Frequency is the way to greatness. Number one, decide to become a multimillionaire, not a millionaire. One, go for multimillionaire status. Go for the multi-status. Okay, if you want 10, if you want one, go for 10. If you want 10, go for 100. Decide on a multiple. Fail high rather than setting a target that later you find out was too low. Stop all poverty behavior. Poverty is a terrible thing. If you've ever known anybody lived in poverty, suffer with poverty, even close to the poverty line, you know that it is awful. And even those with money can live like they are in poverty. I've known millionaires that acted like they were in poverty, wouldn't spend any of the money they had because they were worried about money not coming in in the future. Make a list of all the actions, because most of this is mental, make a list of all action those who live in poverty operate with and commit to not doing them. Listen to what I'm saying here. Make a list of the activities that people that either live in poverty or act like they're living in poverty how they operate every day. Drugs, alcohol, buying stuff, not investing but spending, wasting weekends, government or any kind of dependence upon others, shortcuts, victim mentality, not reading, refusing to network and refusing to get outside your zip code and travel are all things that you need to stop. And I'm sure you could expand this list. Stop all poverty behavior. So have 12 employees, I'm sure at one point you had you know four or five employees, how did you go from four or five to whatever you have Dude, now? I, I, had, I had two employees from the age of 29. No, no, from the age of 30 to 38 years old, I had two employees for eight years. I did everything. I was the secretary, phone answer. Uh, I did payroll, stole from myself, <laughs> did my taxes, I did my own taxes, I wouldn't pay anybody anything. Okay, from uh, 30 to, to 38, 38 to 45 I added like two or three people. I was, I was officing out of the guest house at my, 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 my place that I lived at in, in Los Angeles. It's a big guest house. Big <laughs> It was a dude, it was an awesome house. Lionel Richie lived in that house, I, you know? It was a cool house, right? But it was small thinking, man. I was still thinking little. And if you're gonna stay small, you're gonna get crushed. So what pushed you over the edge? 2009, 2008 and 2009. So what eventually made you say, you know what? I'm just gonna make it be with you. What happened was a guy told me years before that, that bigger's not better, and I believed it. Because he busted out, he busted out when he went big, and he says, "Grant, bigger's not better, man. Stay small." And I and I believed that dude, and I carried it on a long time. It's bad advice. Knowledge is power. Bad knowledge is too. So what I did was I stayed small till I was 45 years old. Five employees. I was one of them. So four. And um, when 2008 came, I'm like, this was. Dude, like I got a scale, and and that was what twelve? Uh, how many years ago was that? Nine years? Seven, Seven or eight years ago? There was no jet. There was no big office. 
it just shows you, man, when you change your mind, when you change your mind and start like, hey, I'm gonna scale this thing out, I'm gonna go global, I'm gonna have people know me, I'm gonna get attention, I'm gonna get my products out, I'm gonna lower my prices, I'm gonna bring this thing to market, I'm gonna get big, bring in good people. We have, how many employees we have now, Jared? 72. 72 at the office. We got our partners here tonight. We got another 150 in, uh, in, in the real estate game. We're gonna expand that. We'll probably pick up another 12 or 15 this month because the two more deals we're bringing on. And next year I'm talking about going global. So all everything that happened, everything that's happened really good to us, it's happened because of the expansion. When I'm in a deal and the problem's there, I will I will nag on it and create some drama. This is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem. But I'm like, okay, what are we gonna do about it? Like, I want to get to the solution now. Let's drop it. I don't even harbor, harbor. one of the biggest deals of my whole life. Yeah. And this guy promised to do one thing, then found out he couldn't. And I wanna punch him in the face. I, 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 wanna, I wanna punish him for it. I want him to, like, I wanna crucify him a bit over it, right? And then I'm like, I even want to tell him I'm not going to do the deal even though I know the deal is good for me. Right. And then I'm like, I got to put that up, do the deal, yeah, that's the solution, that's said, let's hey. move on. You know, I think that I, what I've done is I've basically taken the things that bother me and turned them around. Like, you know, um, I didn't have an uncle, so I'm like, hey, why, why don't you quit saying how you didn't have an uncle and be the uncle? That's so good. Uh, I hated the car business, so I'm like, rather than quitting the car business and walking away from it, why don't you make the car business better? Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't like the way little little people are treated with their finances, I, how the banks treat you, the mm. 401ks, mm -hmm. buying a house, all the scams. So I'm like, you know what? I can't just bitch about something without becoming part of the solution. So that's why Absolutely, we created- Absolutely, sir. That's why we created Cardone Capital. I was 51 years old, between the age of 25 and 51, I didn't have one drink said, until I get my money so right, I don't deserve a hangover. I'm not having any more hangovers. Those hangovers cost you money, right? How many of you woke up with a hangover today? Paid attention to it for the first two hours. How good do you feel, man? How good do you feel? How confident you are? It takes a lot of confidence to go get money. It takes a lot of willingness and determination, you know? It's not a problem when you're broke. It's a problem when you get money. When you start having a little bit of money, that's when most people soften up. Would you agree? How often do I look at my finances? Every day, man, I say, send me that. If you got one checking account with $3,000 in it, look at it. If you don't look at it, it, if you ignore it, it will go away. Money loves attention. Money's like a, it's like a jealous lover. You don't pay attention to it, it's gonna find somebody else to bed with. Create multiple flows of income. It is said that the average millionaire has seven flows of income. That's not true. I assure you, the rich boys and girls have many, many more flows than seven. I probably have closer to 700 than I do uh, seven. Multiple flows. Never rely on one flow of anything, okay? And by the way, those of you out there quitting your job, you're like, I'm, no, you didn't quit your job. You left your job. You started network marketing and you gave the network marketing more attention than your first job, now you're back to one job again. Okay, the reason you got a network marketing was to create, get two flows of income going. Don't leave the first one, go to the second one, abandon the first one, you end up with one again, multiply. Hiring people's not the problem, getting rid of them is. Okay, and I don't care if we get rid of them. Like, like I, don't, I don't remember any of them. I tell my wife all the time, they might all go. See, we might just nuke them. Because <laughs> we're going to go win the game. So you guys going to help me win the game? We're going to win the game together. If you're not going to help me win the game, you won't be in the stadium. And that's the way it is. Brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, I like you, I love you. We spooned it once. Whatever, dude. If you, if, if, if. <laughs> that was weird. Okay. If you're not helping us move the ball down the field, you're going to go. Dads, uncles, aunts, brothers, sisters, mothers, cousins. Bro, look, you're not helping anymore. Bye-bye. Good for everybody. Right? If you've ever drugged somebody along and they weren't in the game anymore, when you let them go, they're happy about it later. They're pissed off in the beginning and then they're like, man, thanks a lot, man. I wasn't chipping in anymore, was I? <laughs> so I know, I'll, I can see that some of you are thinking right now, man, I gotta get rid of, even your friends, dude, you're already a company. Everybody here already has a company. You are a company right now. You don't get a company, you are a company. All the friends you got, the leeches, the losers, right? The bad advice givers. 
All the bullshit that you put up with every day, all the bad advice you get, all the freaking stealing going on around you, the person that works across the desk from you that steals hours from your owner, that talks negative about your owner, the guy that's writing him a check, and he's like, hey, what a what a wanker he is, right? And you listen to all that, all that's affecting you. That is your company right now. Never lose money. Period. When I invest in a relationship and I take a client to dinner, I cannot lose that money. The money goes away from me and I get the relationship. They remember, I remember, right? When I put Damon John on my plane and fly him across Las Vegas, it would appear that I lost money. Damon remembers, I remember, we talk about it and it pays me in the future. Never lose money, okay? I get on a plane, fly across the country, my wife and I and the kids, and we fly over there and we have great memories. That money is lost. Don't kid yourself. Oh, I got great memories of my kids. You should have brought somebody with you. Think bigger. What you ought to do is bring a family that could do business with you, that could advance your network. You would be better off spending 10 times more money than less money and having an investment. Never lose money. Quit investing in stocks. Quit speculating. Quit Bitcoining. I mean, until you're rich, don't play that game. I'm 19 years old and I run a consulting firm. And uh, right now, I, I just tell you real estate stuff and I have only about 60 grand from what I've done saved up. Yeah. And do you think I need to still wait till 100 grand to invest yeah. in real estate or is yeah. that too little? How long you had 60 grand? Uh, for just like 12 months now. Yeah, dude. Like you gotta get the other 40, bro. It's an arbitrary number. I just made up the number. It could be 110. It could be, dude, it's just, it's just to, so you know, first of all, when you get to 100, call me. Yeah. And I'm going to probably tell you, hey, man, you need to wait till you got 350. <laughs> but at least then you're going to be like, you know what? I, I learned how to make, I learned how to not just make 100, save 100, and put 100 away. People are investing too soon. They're, you guys are investing three grand here, two grand over here, a thousand bucks, 500. You're walking away from it. It's never worth any money. It's dumb. And you never create the discipline. What you end up with is a bunch of losses, a bunch of little losses, rather than knowing I have the confidence that I can make money, set it aside, protect it, right? Protect it like a kid, right? It's not gonna get in a wreck. I don't lose it. I would do that first. So was there an age? I didn't invest, my, my, my first investment was $5,000 and I blew it. And I'm like, I'm not doing that again. My next investment's gonna be big where I'm gonna watch it. Because if it's big enough, dude, if your life depends on it, you'll get up in the mornings and you'll watch it. So my next deal was 350 grand. It took three years to do it. All I did was save money, save money, save money. I put 350 grand in a deal, sold that deal for $4 million, a $4 million profit. Put every last penny you had. I had, I had one third of all my money in that deal. I had a million dollars, like a million one, put 350 in my first deal, 30 days later, put 450 in a second deal, 90 days later, put all the rest of my capital, 100% of all my money, plus 90 grand in three real estate deals. Those are the first three investments I ever made. In my the, the first three of four investments I made in my entire life. One of them worked out. Three of the four did. The little one didn't. The little one couldn't work. It's impossible to work. It was too small. What's it going to do? It's not going to do anything. It's like going into a casino and you bet fifteen dollars. Right? You get blackjack. So what, it's still $15. The first thing you're gonna say is, dude, I should have bet everything. But you didn't. You shouldn't even be in there. Look, buying a jet was something I never dreamed I'd do. I never, okay? I only started thinking about it four or five years ago. When I'm young and broke, I'm growing up in Louisiana, middle class, being told, be grateful you got a bike. Got a bike. Be grateful you got clothes on your back and you get three meals. Be grateful for all that you got, because you got it better than I do. I never dreamed of having my own damn jet. Jet, jet. Whatever you have to do to keep your purpose burning hot, you do it. You borrow money, okay? Use money. If it requires money, so be it. If you're truly obsessed, it will be worth it because you will get the results. You know, the secret to sustaining the obsession is a straightforward one. Focus your efforts on everything that will fuel you for the long run and ignore, eliminate, and block out anything that drains you 
or causes you doubt. Money, power, fame, success, all, all of them follow attention. So what gets the most attention is what will grow. The problem with these things is money, power, fame, and success, even time off. They they require attention. They're like jealous lovers. They need constant attention or they're going to leave you. How you invest your time is more important than how you invest your money. Being obsessed with your sense of purpose across every part of your life will allow you to accomplish all the things you desire. I think most people are not accomplishing what they want in one area of life because they quit on all the other ones. If you quit on all the other ones, how are you going to get this one to run? Nothing inspires me more than surrounding myself with people who have achieved more than I have and then meeting new people. I need the obsessed must surround themselves with people you trust and respect who think big, who've done bigger than you, and who can help you get to where you want to go. You think you can run only so fast? Time is no longer an excuse. Look, man, if you can't get your money right, something's wrong. If you can't take care of your family, you got to ask yourself, how much of a man are you? Like, for me, that identifies me as a man, my mm. ability to take care of my family. Mm. I don't just mean financially, but I, I do mean financially, right? My, my job as, a, as head of household is to take care of the economics of the household. It, you know, the word economy, if you look it up in the dictionary, it comes from managing a household. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with a business. It was about managing the household. So if you go back a thousand years, we've been managing households. My job as a man is to provide a place where it's warm, a place where we can sleep, a place where we're protected, a place where there's food, right? Not money, right? I need to be able to take care of the family. Shelter, food, clothing, and I need to have some fun. My family wants to have fun. We want to have experiences, so I need to provide a secure environment for them so they're not, think bad things aren't just happening. And so, so men need to like bone up, man. Like the government can't take care of you. Bone up, you know this? Yeah. <laughs> bone up, get strong, right? Get strong, yeah. So get a, get a backbone and take care of your family and quit blaming the government or... Making excuses. The, your neighbor or the economy, economy or what, whatever conditions. Look, I have, I've had some terrible conditions in my life. Uh, from the age of uh, 15 till... 25, it was awful for me. 10 years, nobody would want to go through the 10 years that, that I went through. Do, do some people have it worse than I did? Probably, but I don't want to do those 10. Those 10 years were terrible for me, as degrading as a human being can experience. Drugs? Yeah, drugs, but m- mostly just so many bad choices, so many bad mm-hmm. people, you know, so, so much self, uh, self uh, deprivation and, and, and just a lack of self esteem and self love. Mm. for myself because of a lot of bad choices. So I understand what goes on through, for a person when they're making bad choices and, and, and people just need to man up, you know, bone up. The women need to do the same thing, by the way. Yeah, women I think they need, are stronger than men today. Oh, oh, look, I hate pain, any kind of pain. Women can handle 10 times the pain I can handle. My job is to get 8 billion people to know me. If enough people know me, they'll buy from me. How many believe that? I, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be a slave to one person or one vertical or one niche or one partnership. I, I have. You guys have the whole world at your access. The whole world. And by the way, if you can't get South Korea to talk about you, you can't get South Indiana or Indianapolis to talk about you. There's people in Korea that are tied to Hawaii, that are tied to Columbia, that know somebody in Indiana, and it can just bang out like that. And I also believe that if I could get enough people to know me in one market, I think that there's something that actually happens. I think if you could out, if you could get, if you could push out enough frequency about your brand, yourself, your ideas to enough people that you hit some critical mass. I don't know if any of you agree with this, but I think there's a spiritual component to where if you can vibrate through enough, all of a sudden other people start thinking, I know that dude. I've said this for years, if I can get enough people, a very small percentage of the population to know me, I think the other 99% become convinced they know me. Do you think that somebody needs to reach a certain like status before building no, a person? No, 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 you do not need to reach a certain stat- status. You need to assume the status now. You need to have the altitude right now to be the professional that says, hey, I know about fitness. Right. I know about plumbing. I know about trucks. Just take whatever you guys are certain about and post it out of it. And by the way, if you're not certain about it, 
write an article about what your uncertainty is costing you. You gotta figure out every possible angle, but none of that's gonna happen until you guys make a decision to blow up. And none of the blow up shit's gonna happen until you make a decision that money is important because if you got people around you saying money's not important, there ain't no way you're gonna do this stuff because it hurts when nobody sees your stuff. We studied two multi-millionaires. Do not, take heed to this, do not study a millionaire. Once a person becomes a millionaire, the first thing they do, unfortunately, is go into conservation to protect the million. Study multi-millionaires, study people that have consistently developed and proven because of tens or twenties or thirties or hundreds of millions of dollars that they've accumulated, that they have the right practice, the right dif discipline, and they're still expanding. You don't need 22 mentors. Study two people deep that have gotten it right. Study two people so deep rather than 20 people shallow, I promise you it'll make a difference. If you get a chance to spend three days with anybody that's accumulated 30, 40, 50, 100 million dollars, I'll promise you it's a game changer. So put that on your bucket list. I'm gonna spend three days with a multimillionaire in an environment where I can learn from them. It will be a game changer for you. And also, limit your study to two people, not 22 people. That will create you from having conflictive uh, data and content and information. Nobody's ever done it by themselves. Mm -hmm. So the, old, the, the entrepreneur that's uh, popular right now is the guy that works from home. Mm -hmm. He's a solopreneur. Um, I don't know if you have this term. We have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a complete misnomer. Nobody has ever existed on this planet and done something successful by themselves. No, it's never happened. So there's, no, there's zero examples of anybody that's done anything. I mean, Jesus had, yeah. had 12. Of course, yeah. Had 12 guys he was rolling with. Right, Alexander the Great had an army. Uh, Genghis Khan had had a, had a like you're not doing this thing by yourself. Nobody does. <laughs> We're a team. Like like for too long I ran by myself, and and it took a lot of energy. You know, it took a lot of energy. It takes more energy running by yourself. Uh, Ryan Secco here, the captain, the pilot, and and the real estate dude. He always says, dude, it's just more fun to run with the team, and he's right. Yeah. You know, Henry Ford. People said Henry Ford made the car out of his garage. I said, yeah, but the company didn't make, they didn't make. <laughs> to the. Yeah, yeah. Top. So uh, Mark Zuckerberg said, you know, Facebook was made out of a dorm. Facebook was made when he moved to Silicon Valley and started a company. Uh, Steve Jobs, Steve and, and the, the, the other dude, what was the dude? Yeah, yeah. They, they yeah. built Apple, you know, supposedly built it out of their garage. Yeah, no, nobody knew about Apple until he moved the company and started and, and, and added employees. So nobody's doing anything great by themselves. You guys that take days off, it's my day off. You ain't entitled to a day off. Why, 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 why do you think you should have Wednesdays off or Thursdays or, or you can't work Saturdays or Sunday? Sunday, you can't work on a Sunday, okay? Are you, and you got people around you telling you not to work on Sunday. Oh, we have to have a little life balance. Dude, how can you have life balance when you're broke? How can you have life balance at a Holiday Inn when the people next door keep you up all night? That ain't life balance, that's not even a vacation. Right, the whole trip, how many have been on the trip? You did the budget trip, included the free breakfast, you did it on miles, and you wish you didn't even go. How many have been on that trip before? Maybe you don't do the trip. Maybe you're not entitled to a trip this year. Maybe you're not ready to trip. That's what Elena and I did for 10 years. We'll sacrifice, we'll sacrifice today. We'll sacrifice this week. We'll sacrifice this month. We'll sacrifice this year. We'll sacrifice so one day maybe we don't have to compromise. Every week we talk about our finances. What do we do this week? How much do we make? Where are we going? What are we spending, okay? The moment I say, hey, no more jackets, no more Stop it, she'll stop it. So that we can one day, we can one day spend whatever we want. Okay, mm -hmm. there, there, there is, should come a time where you guys should be able to spend whatever you want, but most people are spending what they can't afford now, only and to find out later they can never later. have any real Because they don't real understand needs. how to make their money multiply, and most people don't understand there is a sacrifice phase. Yeah. We went through the sacrifice yeah. phase where there was years of yeah. just cut off Everything. And we weren't saving for no, a rainy no day. Vacations. We were saving for the rainbow. 
That's right. Y'all need to we save for the rainbow. rainbow. You need to, you see, we didn't I, go on a vacation for 13 years. Yeah, I, I've been saving for this stuff. I, didn't, I wasn't saving for vacations. I was saving so I could bank into real estate so I could go to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. And even if I had a bad night of sleep and had to get up three or four times, I'm like, dang, I'm making money in my sleep. Even if I'm unhappy, I'm like, I'm making money in my sleep, man. See, that's the goal yeah. that you and your wife need to have. Let's make money when we go to Turks and Caicos or when we go to St. Bart's or when we go to Cali. Let's go waste some money later in our life. Maybe you say, hey, I'm gonna sacrifice today so I don't have to compromise in the future. Hey man, I'm uh, 20 years old in contracting here in Michigan. Um, my biggest question is, how hey, do you uh, gain credibility of business being young in an industry? Yeah, so good question. I'm glad you said new to the industry, not because you're only 20 years old. You got to, you got to get, you got to become, you got to become the uh, the expert, buddy. I don't, I don't know how to tell you this any other way. You got to become. You got to become the expert in the room. You got to know more than everybody else. You got to be like people say, oh, if you're in if you're in a room and you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. You go in a room, yeah. dude. You need to be the smartest guy in the room. You need okay. to be the guy in the room uh, that sucks the oxygen out of the room. So Elon walks, e like Elon Musk walks in a room and everybody's and like, showing yeah. up to the he, office, but doing my best, just trying to build report and uh, make no, no, sales. don't 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 try to build report, dude. You got you got to become an expert at your deal. Like if you're milking cows, you need to become the freaking guy that knows every freaking angle on a on a on a cow's titty. Okay, like Michigan, right? Gosh, Josh. Okay, Josh. So, dude, take take like like. You're 20 years old, bro. Spend the next four or five years becoming an expert in your field. Study it, breathe it, live in it. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Do backstrokes in it. I don't do businesses that don't serve my life. So mm -hmm. the real estate, it's just what I'm doing every day, right? It's the speaking. It, 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 it just all fits for me. So. I need a lot of action, but they all work. Like like my hand, I move my pinky and all the other fingers move. So if I move this business, it, it, it touches these businesses. Uh -huh, the businesses okay. are all connected. They're interconnected. Well, they're, they're a bit connected, right? Okay. So if I move one, mm -hmm. we came here to do a speaking gig. Okay, but? We stack this interview. This is part of my business, right? My, our yeah. online presence is dependent upon me mm -hmm. being willing to do this in addition. We don't go any place for one thing. Mm. So the guy that tells you focus on one business, dude, why don't we have one finger? Why don't I just have one finger? <laughs> Great. Right? <Not> the four. <laughs> so but boom, I got I got notice I got five fingers and I got two hands. I had a I had a girlfriend, but this was before I was married. She says, You want your cake and you want to eat it too. And I said, <laughs> Yeah, well, why have a cake <laughs> if you can't eat it? Okay. So my, my, my mom used to tell me, you need to focus on one thing at a time. I'm like, Five fingers. Five fingers. Two hands, okay? So I, I want my hands in all, a bunch of pies. I just want to be sure I want to eat that pie. Okay. I want to eat that meal, right? Because I think a lot of people have their hands. <coughs> Sorry. I think a lot of people have their hands and stuff. They don't really want to eat the meal. Do you guys just rubberneck your whole life? You know, you ever been driving down the road, there's a wreck on the oh, side, yeah. and everybody's like, oh my God, why is all the traffic stopped? There's only one person with a flat tire on the side of the road. Right, everybody's stopping to see what happened over there. You're rubbernecking your life and not getting where you want to go, okay? Because everything's a distraction. Some people call it schizophrenia, like my friend Kathleen, but it's not really schizophrenia, it's a lack of focus. Make hard decisions fast. People say, man, you're a hard man, you're a tough dude, okay? Look, you gotta make hard decisions fast. When things get tough, they say the tough get going. Truth is, when things get tough, the successful make hard decisions quickly. That's why super successful people are often misunderstood. They're willing to make hard decisions that often don't make them look good and for which they're later judged. The truth is for you to be financially successful, you will have to make very, very difficult decisions. When you do, make them fast. My mom used to say, if you're walking through the sun, pick it up, go fast. I want you to walk away understanding that some of you have businesses that are just not good businesses. And if you have a business that's no good, you can't build the empire you want. Why do I need money? What don't I know about money? Why are people struggling with money? You should ask yourself these questions. Why are you coming up short on money?
Is it what you know or what you don't know? How many of you know this saying, knowledge is? Okay, yeah, how many of you agree with that? How many of you agree knowledge is power? So look, if you don't have money and you have knowledge, maybe you have the wrong knowledge. I've been here five years, you guys don't know me. You know why? I didn't let you know me. If you don't know me, you won't flow me, right or wrong. So my job is to make sure I'm known. Today, today it's easier than it's ever been before. That's why I'm a guy that's using social media to get known. It takes courage to stand up here. It takes courage to get known. It takes courage to build a brand. It takes courage to build a YouTube channel and an Instagram and a Facebook. I'm 60 years old. I don't know anything about Instagram, except that I got 900,000 people that follow me every day like a religion. You ask them what church they go to. I go to the church of Grant Cardone. Okay, what's my name? My name is Grant Cardone. What's my name? My name, because you didn't know, this is for the people that didn't know. My name is Grant Cardone. Let me hear it. Okay, my job, my job, my first job, your first job is to make sure people know your damn name. Because if they don't know your name, they, I don't care what you sell. You're a nurse, you work at McDonald's, you're a bellman. I don't care what you do. You're, you're parking cars. It don't matter if I don't know who you are. It doesn't matter how good you are, how, how clean you are, okay? It doesn't matter, your values don't matter. Nothing matters if I don't know you. So you don't believe in this concept about balancing business no. and life? I've never, all the people that talk about it yeah. don't, have, don't have the very thing they're trying to get. Probably, yeah. So, so You're constantly balancing something. You're under stress that I think so. Totally, just, totally. So, so if you just, like what I do is I just push into everything, right? I push into everything as hard as I can. And, and again, the goal is life, it's not the business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's my life, right? P okay. Business is part of my life. So f having fun is part of my life. My spiritual part is part of my life. So I'm gonna push everything into that thing that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. the, 10X, the 10X thing was about, I'm pushing, like if, it, if, it's, if it's in the business, I'm gonna push as hard as I can on that. And my kids are with me, my wife's with me, she, they're with me, so they're, they're, they're having the experience of this push. Then we turn around, we push over here. Oh, we want to help charities out. And we push 10X into that direction. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just, it, just, it just blows out the edges mm -hmm. of the life, right? So that we get to have a bigger experience as opposed to, okay, now I need to put this here Absolutely. and manage this part right now. Mm -hmm. Which means when I'm doing this, when I'm finding time just for my kids, I'm abandoning all these other things and my life gets smaller. All the commitment stuff, oh, you gotta be committed, oh, you gotta be committed. We always talking to my trainer about this. You gotta be committed. Yeah, but treat this. There's only one thing you really have to do. Because the commitment's not gonna come until you do this other thing. The thing that has got me through everything, got me to where I'm at today. The thing that changed everything was me just taking action. Just doing it. I mean, I know that's that old Nike saying, right? Just do it. Man, even if you don't feel like it, even if you're not committed, even if you're not getting any gains, even if you're not winning, I talk about this in the rules of success, show up, just take action, make the call, knock on the door, send out the email, bug people if you have to, you know, until you get good and, and it doesn't sound like bugging anymore. It's just the professional knows how to bug people without bugging them. So look, just take action. Money is so simple, okay? Anybody got a $100 bill? Give me a $100, sir. Give this man a big hand for having some money. Okay? I just had an idea. I said, I wonder, I ain't got any money on me. I had an idea. Now, I'm going to teach you a lesson right now that will make you rich if you can get it, okay? Number one, I want some money. Number two, I need to ask somebody if they got a hundred. <laughs> Number three, I need to get the money. <laughs> it's no more complicated than that. I didn't go manufacture something. I didn't build a business plan. I didn't create a product. I had an idea. 
the, 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 the length of time between your idea and the money will determine whether or not you're successful. The length of time between the idea and the monetization, big word for get the money. The, the distance between the idea and the money will determine whether you take off or not. Why do we make so many excuses? I think that we are like uh, excuses making machines. machines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I miss a deal, we, we, we do a lot of real estate deals. So if I miss a deal, I'm always going to, what did I do wrong in that deal? First response for me is, what did I do wrong in that deal that mm. they didn't pick me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What did I do wrong that I didn't get that deal? What did we do wrong that we didn't hit our number there? Like, I, I'm never saying. It's not blaming somebody. Well, I don't have control when I blame. I want control. So even if they are to blame, right? I want control. I'm, I'm not gonna assign you blame. If you hit my car, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, what did I do wrong? What did I do that allowed you to hit my car? Hmm. I did something. So even in the most, like I, I ended up in a lawsuit where a guy basically found something, sued me for it. I didn't do anything to this dude. My immediate response was, what did I do to create that frivolous situation? He was a criminal, total criminal, sued me for 60 million bucks. He just sued me because he, he thought he could get something Some from money, it. Yeah. But, but I did something. And the reason I want to assume that, what? the cause, I want to be the cause point, is because if I assume that position, even though I didn't really do anything, um, then I can control what I did. I can't control what another person does, but I can spend time and energy controlling what I do. The company is only as great as the driver is. Number two, does the dude have a bunch of fuel? You know what fuel is? See this plane right here, this plane's no good. No matter how good this plane is, if there's no fuel, plane no good. Plane don't go any place without fuel. Neither does the company. I know guys that have great companies, but they're out of fuel. They're just not, yeah. they're not gonna use it. They're drivers, they were drivers, they used to drive. They got fuel in the tank, but three, they won't use it. They're not gonna press because somebody's on their neck right now saying, conserve your money. A lot of rich people, this happens to a lot of rich people. People get rich, they go from the middle to rich and never get wealthy. Well, the wealthy, it becomes impossible to get wealthy like the Rockefellers or the people that we're talking about, the DuPonts, the Morgans, the, uh, the Vanderbilts, because- Cardone. Because the Cardone, the Cardones, because they get satisfied with wealthy. I'm sorry, with mm -hmm. rich and they never get wealthy. Wealthy is generational money. Grant died, I guarantee you my grandkids will be talking about me. That's a bad right there, dude. <laughs> There's a, that dude, that dude, that dude, that dude got damn. <laughs> okay, and then number four, dude, you gotta have a future, like the future I'm interested in, and, and by the way, I'm gonna go back to the New World Order, boys and girls, the, the, the Illuminati, the Masons, whoever they are. These people think about futures. You guys don't. They're thinking about generations. That's what the Japanese do. The Japanese, they think about future generations. They're not thinking about right now. How about the Muslims? They're thinking about lifetimes from now. How many heard this before? People buy from people they like. No, 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 people buy from people they know. Okay, if you're taking notes. People buy from people they know, period. They don't buy the best product. They don't buy the cheapest product. People buy from people they know. Because if you don't know me, Trust will not happen. That's why I rolled up on Damon and said, hey, how about I put you in the plane and I fly you to, to, fly you to Vegas? Same dude's telling me I was stupid buying a plane. I said, dude, come on. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? You spent too much time on a street corner selling hats. <laughs> that bird, that bird, that bird is what got me in front of you, DJ, little man. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, man. And then he says, now I'd have gone with you anyway. You would not have got on JetBlue with me. <laughs> don't lie, man. I know you're the people shark, but don't lie. What, what am I calling you up? Hey, Damon, I bought a ticket for us on Southwest. You want to fly to Vegas with me and we can eat peanuts? <laughs> he wouldn't have gone with me. How many agree he would not have gone with me? Come on, man. He might be the people shark, but he ain't stupid. He's like, hey, I ain't doing that. Right or wrong? He said to me, what's the fuel in that jet cost? I said, bro, you, you're thinking small, bro. 
He's like, what do you mean? What's it cost? What's the damn fuel in a jet cost? I said, I don't know. Why don't you know? I said, because the jet ain't no good without fuel. I think the, the idea of knocking on doors, you know, talking to people. Yeah. Like these are the skills that are not taught in the schools. This mm -hmm. is why it goes back to your question about the school system mm -hmm. failing. The, ba the, the, the required skills, I need a client. Like if you simplify, the thing that people like about what we do is we simplify the business process. Mm -hmm. I need to make a contact. How can I do that? Like how can I just simply, if I'm doing, if I'm a cameraman and I want more work, you know, how do I knock on a door or make a phone call, get in front of someone. So hard. Impress them, you know. If I go to Harrods right here, I'll see how many people don't have that skill. I walk in, they, I don't even get a hello. You know, I don't get hello. How you doing? Great to have you here. Appreciate you being here. It's so nice for you to drop by. Thanks for coming into Cartier. I mean, it's, it's a $3 million ring over there. I went in there the other day. I can't even get anybody to show me anything. I'm like, how much is the ring? You know, they kind of look at me, right? Can you show it to me? Do you mind showing it to me? He showed it to me, told me how much it was, and I leave. He didn't show me a second ring, a third ring, a fourth ring. So those are the skills that people need, right? How do I... How do I interact with people? Communicate. Yeah. The middle class adds and subtracts, and, and clearly the middle class never figured out how to do what the super wealthy do. Like, it's almost like hundreds of millions of people in America stopped math at adding and subtracting and never got to the multiplication part. Because <laughs> the super wealthy are multipliers. Oh, by the way, time, energy, and money. They multiply all of them. They're like, look, I got time. I want to make more time. How do I do that? You learned how to add. You learned how to subtract. But that's not what the Rothschilds did. That's not what the Rockefellers did. That's not what the DuPonts did. They multipliers. We can't afford that. How many of you told your kids about that before? We can't do that bike. We can't buy the bike, right? You told your kids that because you were told that, right? We don't tell our kids that. How many of you were told as kids, be careful? That's why you guys think so much. You got, you got Dave Ramsey on TV saying, total freedom comes from not having debt. Okay, you, got, you, you flip channels and you go to Susie, you can't afford that, okay? I'm gonna tell you that you can afford anything. No, no, no. Hey, debt's not your problem, okay? I got four, four I, got, I probably got $500 million worth of debt today. 500 million. I was 28 years old, three years sober, no drugs in my body for three years. I'm selling cars, I'm moving Toyotas, and I'm getting good at it too. Like you come in and say, look, I got bad credit, and I'm not buying today. I'm like, oh shit. that's two cars. I'm gonna penalize you, I'm gonna penalize you for saying that bull Okay, okay, you got bad, you got bad credit? That's perfect. At least you got some credit. See, I ain't positive. I'm there to get something. So, so Captain Ryan says to me, he's like, you're the most positive person I know. I say, dude, I'm not positive at all. I'm 10X. I get results, okay? I want to get the deal done. I want to make my kids proud of me. My kids aren't going to remember whether I was positive or not. They're going to remember whether daddy delivered the goodies or not. You understand? When you go to Whole Foods and they say, hey, that'll be $427 for three bags. And you're like, I got a good attitude. They'd be like, you need to get some 10X. You need to get some 10X and some money to go with your attitude. All the greats on this planet were addicted to something. Jesus was addicted. He's like, hey man, I'm gonna do whatever it takes right or wrong okay you got to get addicted to something good all addictions are not created equal okay I'm addicted to my wife I'm addicted to my kids I'm addicted to my purpose I'm addicted to helping out I'm addicted to making a difference I'm addicted to doing whatever it takes to show and be an example of the blessings that I have. One of the things that we do, a little trick we do at our company, 
is we always have something on our calendar to look forward to, okay? If you wanna stay motivated, today's what, Sunday? I always have something out here, out here, out here, out here, and out here to look forward to. Little short runways that keep me excited, okay? I'm going to Turks and Caicos to shoot a real estate uh, program when I leave here. Yesterday I walked out of here, I'm exhausted. I'm like, boy, I can't wait to get to Turks and Caicos. See, it re-energizes me, right? Now, when I'm done with that, I need something else to look forward to here. I got a whole bunch of stuff that's gonna happen here at the end of the month that is gonna keep me jacked up when I'm at Turks and Caicos because the truth is, Turks and Caicos could get a little boring for a guy like me. How many of you have trouble going on vacations? You have trouble unwinding. Okay, You don't even want to go. You're like, I can't even enjoy this. So I need little tricks. I have little tricks. Everybody should do this in their life, okay? You need things to look forward to. The, the world you live in today, the CNBC and the CNN and the Netflix, be happy. Just be happy. Be satisfied with what you have. There's no push, man. There's nobody pushing you. How about this? You can do more. How many of you can do more? Oh my God. If that's all you got, how many of you can do more? Well, God damn. If you know you can do more, if you know you can do more, then you have to do more. If you know you can help, if you know you can make a difference, if you don't, you're gonna have this freaking big, big hole inside of you. No, no amount of money can fill this thing up. For 30 years since I left that treatment center, I've been doing one thing, studying business. I don't need to worry about my neighbor. I don't need to worry about Trump. I don't need to worry about Obama. I don't need to worry about the Democrats. I don't need to worry about anything until I worry about these 36 inches. Man, man, people are like, hey, do you believe in aliens? Dude, I got, I'm having trouble with this. All I'm trying to do is expand it over to here. Once I do that, maybe I can expand a little bit, but I gotta get those six feet under control. I don't criticize other people. I'm too busy criticizing me. While I work on my life, I hope other people hate on me and criticize me. I love it. It's fuel, man. I'm like, come on, bring it on. Commit to getting more done. The more you get done, the more you will earn. Why do I get more done? Because I post, I post without looking at it. I simply get more done. Why? Because I'm committed to getting more done. I'm not, co I'm not committed to doing it perfectly. These guys all work with me. I wish you could see our studio. Okay? But I got Francisco here. I got Johnny. I got Nathan here. I got, guys, guys, do I ever talk about doing anything perfectly? Have I ever said anything about doing something perfectly? I do it. I just do. I just do a lot of stuff. Okay? I'm like, put that stuff on the wall. There you go. That's good. Okay. Look, man, Johnny's doing the whole room. That's, that, that's Natalie. There's Nathan. Okay. We got a good group here, right? So check it out. Yes. Number one, you got to commit. Number two, you got to do whatever is in front of you. Just do it. It doesn't need to be approved. It doesn't need to be checked. We're not hunting. Like I'm not deer hunting here. I'm not taxi driver. And the deer hunter, <laughs> you understand? We're, we're, we're not like, I'm not going public here. I'm not trying to raise a billion dollars. I'm just trying to get my job done. It's an Instagram post, man. The number one reason businesses fail is the inability, the inability to sell products in quantities great enough and at margins high enough. That is the only reason you will fail. You take too long to go from the idea to sell on enough products, volume at margins high enough. Do that, learn to do that. And you can make any dream a reality, okay? I wanna help the world. This is not taught in schools. There's eight billion people on this planet and there's no shortage of information. How many have heard this before? Knowledge is power. Then why are so many people suffering? Why are so many people suffering? No, they ain't stupid, man. We have more information available to us today than at any time in the history of the world. We got too much information at this point. You got too much information and not enough action. 25 years old, I'm selling automobiles, I'm broke, I'm in debt, $40,000 in debt, spiritually bankrupt, physically bankrupt, 
hate myself. Only thing I had was an opportunity. The car dealer that I worked for took me back. That was an opportunity. Don't dismiss the opportunity. You can't go any place without an opportunity. No matter how talented you are, no matter how gifted you are, no matter what God has done for you, without an opportunity, you will not move from your garage. Your life cannot improve without an opportunity. It's impossible. You guys don't like sales because you ain't got any courage. That's why you want to be a, you want to be the vice president of something. That's why you guys want to call it something else. Okay. Most of you in the room don't even have sales on your card. You, you sell real estate for Remax. Okay. Or Keller. And you don't even have sales on the card. You're in network marketing. You refused. We don't do sales here. What do, what do, what do you do then? Okay. What do you do? I mean, I think the company's got a financial statement. You ever read a financial statement? What's the first line on a financial statement? Huh? What's that first line? It's the first line, by the way. Okay. I've seen a bunch of income statements in my life. The first the first ones are like two to maybe max four inches long. Big companies, big giant companies, okay? I got five companies, they run to one financial statement and the top line, the top line, the sales line, you could call it, I think it's called also what, revenue? Could be called gross revenue, okay? You know people are getting confused now. Okay, they start getting away from this word. Some, some, some college guy came in and said, we can't call it sales, man. We gotta call it something like, at least two or three words. I mean, I, I went to Harvard. It's not about how much money you make, folks. Can you use money? Can you use it, okay? Look, this top, these top lines right here are about income. If you hate sales, you hate income. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your age is, okay? I spent the first, from the age of 25 years old to 45 years old, I spent 20 years thinking small, thinking small, and taking too long. I built three little businesses. They were all doing good, man. They were doing good, three of them, man, from scratch. First little business. I was a millionaire when I was 30, 33 years old. Punching, shoving, hard work, man. The more money I had, the more scared I was. Because I had just enough money to be scared. As soon as you get a million dollars, you're gonna go into terror. I'm telling you, you're gonna be like What am I gonna do now? Okay, I wasn't scared before, now I got something to lose. That's why you never wanna get your advice from a millionaire. If you're taking notes, never get your advice from a millionaire, ever, okay? This held me down for 20 years. 20 years it held me down. You're looking at me like, huh? I read The Millionaire Next Door. What did the millionaire next door say? Buy a used truck and don't go to Starbucks. You say four bucks a day for the next 38 years, you're gonna be in heaven. No, you ain't. You're gonna be <laughs> It's dumb, man, okay? If $4 is gonna break you on any given day, you're just back to thinking the way you were thinking when you didn't have anything. Buy everything on sale, okay? Everything you're gonna buy is gonna be on sale. You gotta get a deal every time you buy something. Is that what your daddy taught you? Never pay retail for anything. That means nobody will ever pay you retail, folks. When I started a Twitter account, I had no followers. When I started a Facebook account, no followers. Uh, I was my first follower. When I started an Instagram account, no followers. Um, I didn't know how to post video. I didn't know how to take a selfie. I didn't know how to do any of this. But I did have a commitment to growing my finances. And if you want to grow your finances, Attention is the gateway. You want to go to heaven? Who wants to go to heaven? You got to die. I'm just telling you, man, you got to die to go to the heaven. And most people don't want to die. They want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. Most people want money, but they're not willing to get the attention. They're not willing to do what it takes to get the attention, including spending money. And I would just tell you this, if you want to change your financial condition, the first thing you need to do is go out and market in the marketplace so that you can create a lead and not worry about whether there's ROI or not. It's so that people are like, what's the ROI? Dude, what's the ROI if nobody knows you? 
Okay, what's the ROI if I don't know your name, don't know your company, don't know what you do, don't know your service, don't know your product, don't know where you're located? What is the ROI, okay? Best product does not win today. The best known product wins. You think Starbucks sells the best coffee? Please, it's nasty. Okay, but it's close. And I know what I'm getting when I get there. McDonald's, they don't sell the best hamburger. Close and available. You need to think way bigger than you're thinking. Like I started in the apartment game uh, 25 years ago in San Diego, California. My first deal, first deal I ever bought was one unit. This little yellow house that I paid $78,000 for, by the way, all this landscaping, that's one of the things I'm known for. I'm like, I'm putting trees up there because that's going to give me some extra rent. It didn't, by the way. My next deal was 38 units. Okay, it was easier buying 38 units than it was one. The only difference was to think. I had to think different. Got to make a few more phone calls, but the play is bigger, right? The reason people, the reason so many real estate people are like marginal people, no offense. Raise your hand if you're marginal. They left on day Raise one. your hand if you're a liar. <laughs> look, look, man, look, I'm marginal to compare to my potential. The fact that there's people in this room that don't know me, I've written seven books, 13 best selling business programs. Uh, I have, I'm probably the top one or two, maybe three social media people in the world, seven million people on Facebook. But seven million people on Facebook is nothing compared to seven billion people in the world. So, think big, man. Problems are opportunities. The bigger the problems, if you could look for the giant problems on this planet and quit complaining about them, right? And quit blaming somebody about them and say, man, what if I took responsibility for that problem? Because there is money in solving problems. You solve a problem, you'll end up with money. And the bigger the problem you solve, the bigger the problem you solve, the more money you end up with. First 35, 40 years of my life, I was being held back by what I knew, what I thought was the truth, it wasn't the truth. These people and companies that are buying private jets, that are hooking up with whoever they want, when they want, that are spending millions and millions and millions of dollars on connections and speed and access. Dude, what are they doing, man? What are they doing, okay? They're doing something different than you and I were taught to do. The school systems don't teach you this. Your mama didn't teach you this. Your daddy didn't teach you this. Your family doesn't know this, right? So you got to go outside your circle of influence. And look around. You know, 12, 14 million, 6 million, 4 million. It's all over the place. And a little guy, a little guy right here got the big jet on the tarmac. A little guy like me end up making it all the way up the food chain because I studied those guys. And you can do the same thing if you study hard enough the right people. Not those guys, those are the pilots, okay? See, they work for 150 grand a year and think they're they're, they're cutting a big fat hog in the ass. Oh, I make 175,000. But they stop learning what the owner knows. Okay, study, man. Study, pay the price for the information and then pay for the price of access to the people and learn from them. If I could go back to my 20-year-old self, what I would tell my 20-year-old self is one thing. Get your money right, son. Worry about the money. And now I know a lot of people think that this is not the thing people should be focused on. However, on this planet, if you don't get your money right, you're gonna be worried all the, all the time. You can't take care of your parents. You can't take care of yourself. You can't take care of your rent. You can't live in a nice place. You can't take care of your car. Get your money right, okay? What should you be spending your money on? Why do wealthy people use money, not spend money? Why do wealthy people buy businesses, they don't buy homes. Why do wealthy people use debt to grow their business? They don't use debt to consume products and services. Why do wealthy people not invest in 401ks and SEPs and retirement accounts? They don't even worry about that. They worry about getting their money so right that they can go wherever they want, day or night. I love baseball. I, I, I love baseball, but, but, but you don't have to love baseball to, to, be, to be inspired by greatness. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this, watch this. Oh my God. So beautiful, look at this. 
Isn't that amazing? Wow. That's greatness, man. That's greatness. That guy, that guy, you, you, he, you know, when you when I watch that, I'm like, I wonder how many times he's run, jumped, taken fly pitch. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of times to get to have that moment right there. So, by the way, that's that's in everybody here. Okay. So if you ever see a great ball play, uh, uh, whether it's football or hockey or ballet or dancing, and you're inspired. It's because it's, it's hitting that part of you that's like, you have that in you. Everywhere you go, you need to, you need to confront every time you hit up against, oh, the, the room's 249, the, the meal's 25 bucks, uh, Starbucks is $6, the airline flight costs 600. Every time you like, oh, okay. You need to understand that you're being reminded you don't have enough money. It has nothing to do with the price. But, but watch how much people disassociate. Oh, American Airlines is charging too much for that ticket. That has nothing to do with it. You don't, you don't make enough money. Okay? So I had a guy, I was in Oakland, California. I was flying back and I said, uh, hey, anybody want to fly home with me? And the guy's like, I want to fly home with you. I'll do it. I said, good. That'll be $48,000 for fuel. Oh, oh, I don't want to do it. No, you can't do it because you don't have the money. Fuel's not the problem. He, didn't, he doesn't make enough money. So just start flipping things. So like now when I see Wagyu, remember that Wagyu we ate in Vegas? It was like $115 for a strip that big. <clears throat> Never do it again, by the way. But the fact that I complained about it only means I don't make enough money. And if the Wagyu's too much money, if the 115 for a little strip of Wagyu is too much money, what does that say about what I'm selling my products for? I'm not charging them up, can't get enough, I have this idea. So it's really, to me, it's really, we go to Paris, man, and we go to the Chanel store and there's people in line, in line, out the front door at the Chanel store. I'm like, oh my God, great experience for me. How much money's on this planet? Go to Monaco, see the yachts, 200 million, 240, 300 million dollars. 300 millions, they cost 30 million a year to take care of them. Great experience. Flying private, been a great experience for me, okay? Guy has five jets, not, 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 he's not complaining about a first class seat anymore and the peanuts. He's got five jets, different level, man. All of a sudden you start thinking different, start asking different, start working deals different. 52 years old and I had a problem. I was depressed. I wasn't satisfied. I was hungry, but didn't know what to do. I had businesses. I had money. I had a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm like, dude, what am I doing now? I'm bickering with Elena. We had our kids. We had the first two kids and we're like, okay, we got a kids. I'm being a parent now, okay? I'm being a married guy, right? I'm being a businessman and I'm unhappy. And then I started asking people, what's wrong, man? What's wrong, what's wrong with me, man? Something wrong with me? Something wrong with me? Oh yeah. And as soon as you say something wrong with me, shit, everybody's got an opinion. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Man, you got a disease, man. You got a problem. You got issues, man. You work too much. You're a work addict. You, 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 you're insecure. Your daddy died. Your daddy died and left a hole in you. Left a hole in me, shit. I can't go on a vacation. I wanna do something, man. Doing less has never solved my problems. Doing less, moderation has never solved a problem for me. The problem that I've had in my life, okay, was not my marriage. Is not, okay, I'm not a bad parent. I wasn't helping enough people. You should be up here. You should be dropping out of the ceiling. You should be helping more people. I just got uh, awarded. awarded this deal, $92.5 million, 31 acres of land. You know, my buddy Evan Carmichael talks about dream, believe. Yeah, but dream what and believe what? Believe you pay your bills or believe you can one day write a check for 60 million bucks? What do you believe? What are you gonna dream of? Like literally, I think people's dreams are one of the things holding them back because they don't know how to dream. I don't know how big to dream. This is doable for any person. I don't care who you are. Anybody could do this deal. Anybody could do that deal. I know the guys that own private jets. They're no smarter than anybody else. They're not smarter. They don't work, probably don't even work any harder. But they did. They did think bigger, and they get and 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 you can't you can't catch whales in a, in a in a bowl goldfish bowl. 
So you got to be in the right, in the right stream of traffic. Money follows attention. Money follows attention. Hey! 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 How much attention can you guys get? A lot. Okay. Most of you can't get attention because your mom and daddy said, don't get too much attention. <laughs> don't get too much attention. Be seen not and not heard. <laughs> Fly under the radar. Because if you get too much attention, they're going to shoot you down. Right? How many heard this before? Fly under the radar, man. Stay low, man. Don't let anybody see me. You making moves. Don't make moves, man. Don't make moves. And then everybody wonders, why can't I get above? Strangers have everything you want. Everything you want, a stranger has it. It will be strangers that will grow your business. It will be strangers that put your kids through schools. It will be strangers that make your dreams a reality. Strangers have everything you want, but you were taught not to talk to them. We can't afford that. How many of you told your kids that before? We can't do that bike. We can't buy the bike, right? You told your kids that because you were told that, right? We don't tell our kids that. How many of you were told as kids, be careful? That's why you guys think so much. You got, you got Dave Ramsey on TV saying, Total freedom comes from not having debt. Okay, you, got, you, you flip channels and you go to Susie, you can't afford that. Okay, I'm going to tell you that you can afford anything. No, no, no. Hey, debt's not your problem, okay? I got four, four I, got, I probably got $500 million worth of debt today. $500 million. I wish it was $5 billion. Yeah, man, I had to get over drugs. Went to a treatment center, spent 28 days in a treatment center. When I was 25, my mom, my brother, and my sister all gave up on me. Like, they're like, like enough. That's how bad a trouble I was in. I was, using, I was using drugs every 45 minutes. I wasn't using drugs once or twice a day. I was using them once or twice an hour. Whatever you're not going to do at a business meeting, you probably shouldn't be doing, period. So I had to clean up. I had to clean up my deal, man. 28 days, I got 28 days, first 28 days of my life in seven years that I didn't use drugs. I was like, man, what am I gonna do now? My fear wasn't using drugs again. My fear was, what am I gonna do with all my time? So when you see me run right now, I'm running from one thing to the next thing, I'm trying to stay busy. Because as long as I stay busy, I don't get in trouble. By the way, I'm the guy that couldn't pay his rent. $275 a month in rent. So at 25, I recommitted to my education, but this time I started studying not things that were in books, but people that had actually created wealth. Not people that had made money, but people that had created wealth. This is completely different. I was no longer studying accounting and economics. I was studying wealthy people, and only wealthy people. I'm not talking about the doctor that was a neighbor that makes a million dollars a year and he's working 18 hours a day and he hates his job. Right, he's working seven days a week, he can't ever spend time with his family. I'm talking about the yacht people. I'm talking about the people that are spending as much time as they want on vacation. I'm talking about the car dealer that had uh, 28 car dealerships, or 82 car dealerships, that has indisposable money. I'm talking about the Walton money. I'm talking about well, the Waltons last week increased their net worth by $11 billion. And they haven't worked for 30 years. That's the kind of wealth I started studying. I started reading Barron's in the Wall Street Journal, and I quickly realized something, that the wealthy people had financial freedom and no one else did, okay? A very small percentage of people. Lots of people have money. My uncle had millions of dollars. He was terrified about his money, wouldn't spend it, acted like a miser, buried money in the backyard. I realized my parents had it wrong. The information I had that was wrong, and this is the number one thing I want you to get out of tonight. The information you have is wrong. The wealthy talk differently than the middle class. I watched my mom and my dad. I started comparing the wealthy people to what my dad did. My dad worked every day, every day of the week. If he wasn't working at the office, he was working in the yard. They saved money, they cut their own grass, okay? Uh, we ate all our food, we turned the lights off, we didn't waste anything. And that was uncertainty, it was insecurity, and it was fear, and it perpetuated uncertainty, insecurity, and fear. 
and, and all the lessons about money. Money doesn't grow on trees. A penny saved is a penny earned. Eat all your food. People are starving, okay? Money, money, you don't waste it, don't play with it. All that creates insecurity and it's incorrect. Dude, you just gotta say, I'm going to get more done and quit talking about all this BS that you're telling yourself. I don't have time. I don't have time. I ain't got time. I'm tired. It don't matter, man. Commit to getting more done. The more you get done, the more you will earn. Period. End of story. Right? So I get more done than Elena does. Uh, Elena, if she, Elena sat here right now, she would say, this man is a damn machine. Why, why do I get more done? Because I post... I post without looking at it. I simply get more done. Why? Because I'm committed to getting more done. I'm not, co I'm not committed to doing it perfectly. I know this, if you want things to change, they can change. And they're not gonna change just because you pray, just because you wish, just because you hope, and they won't change just because your family wants it to change. It did not change until, until I started getting information. And if you're taking notes today, it didn't start changing until I started getting rid of information. One of the most important things that happened to me in my life was to get rid of information. A man told me once, he's like, hey, look, man, if things aren't going well, somebody or something is causing it not to go well. How many agree with that statement? Okay. Things aren't going well, something or someone is causing things not to go well. Okay, and before you guys take on the Republicans or the Democrats or the conspiracy, he said, Grant, before you take on other people, why don't you just take on these 24 inches right here, bud? Okay, before you take on change in the whole world, why don't you handle like between your shoulders? Because you got your hands full. Different game today, folks. Different game, man. Everything's changing. Remember when you waited for a taxi cab? Remember that? When was that? How many people on this planet complained about having to wait on a dirty cab? Millions and millions and millions of people said, oh my gosh, hey man, let's just send it to them. If you can close the distance between an idea and money, okay, you'll get rich. When I was a kid, when I was growing up, the guy that, the guy that knew how to take care of his environment was my dad. I was eight years old, and then this dude, this dude controlled everything in this environment. And he left early for work, he came home late. Took care of his family, I and mean, you knew, he never gave anybody a lecture about what to do. He, he just, lit, he was a good example. And, um, and he had the money and he made the money. We were middle class, middle class family, so we were like little red brick house, white brick actually, white brick house, about 1,400 square feet, seven people lived in it. And my dad, I could tell my dad was trying to get somewhere. He was trying to move us up. He was trying, and he wasn't trying to brag. He was trying to take care of. And so I was watching that, right? And I watched where this guy, he, he's the one that made the decision where we went, how long we stayed. And I started associating that. The money maker makes the rules. This is what Elena was talking about. You know, there's around the money, I make the rules around the money. Around other things, Elena makes the rules. So you gotta know what you're good at, what your job is and what your role is. My dad and my mom knew their roles. <coughs> The problem with that is when my dad died suddenly at 52 years old, my mom was left to do something she didn't, she didn't have, she was not skilled up to do. And, and I was 10 and I wasn't, I didn't know how to help my mom. And my dad left a little bit of insurance money from the, from the life insurance or the death insurance, better, better, it's really called death insurance, you just can't sell it if they call it that. And my mom, didn't know how long that money would last. So immediately after my dad died, when my w mom should have been in grief, she, she went, went immediately into massive fear. And I could see it, I could sense it as a 10 year old. My mom was in fear every day. Clipping coupons, saving money, you know, turn the lights off, eat all your food. It was constant messages. Go across town to get gas, like everything. You can't buy strawberries today. You know, they'll be, they'll be, 
20 cents cheaper tomorrow. Everything was about fear. And so I, I couldn't do anything about it or didn't think I could do anything about it. And I just kept telling myself, one day, one day I'm going to be in a position to change this. And I think that really drives me today to like take care of people not be in that situation again. You don't have more money, folks, because now it's not, it's not because you don't work. It's not because you're not a good person. It's not because you overspend. It's not because you got too much debt. It's not because you don't bust your ass. It's because your money doesn't bust its ass. Your money is lazy. If your money was employees, you would fire your money. So here's the rules, okay? Number one, the, the money, the extra money should go into something that gives you money. You want your money to have babies. The golden goose is no, lo no longer good if she doesn't have eggs. The only thing that makes the golden goose valuable is the fact that the golden goose lays, lays, lays eggs. So if you just study the wealthiest families in the world, not just in America, in the world over long periods of time, look at the queen, the queen of England. This much property and one of the richest families in the world. Why? They get cash flow every month from India, from England, from Ireland, from all over the world. Why, why, why are the princes in Saudi Arabia so wealthy because they have constant inflow of money coming from the land that produces the oil. The oil comes out of the land and produces cash flow. The railroads, the railroads back in the day, what'd they do? They got all this land together and then they rented that land out to everybody around it. Why do all the teachers credit unions take all the money from all the teachers around America and then they start investing in real estate that produces cash flow so they can distribute back to their members? I'm always gonna come back to this one story. Look, real assets that produce real cash flow every month. When it pays you every month, and you're getting reminded every month, I got a check, I got a little $100 check, I got a $200 check this month. I got a $13,000 check today from one of my properties. Every month I get a check for 13 grand from that property. That's $150,000 a year. It didn't start like that, it used to be like 1,300 bucks, 1,300, then it was 26, then it was 5,000, next thing you know it's 13 grand. That's one property, pays me every month. Property just sits there, okay? It just sits there. It, it might not even change in value. It just sits there and produces cash flow. Anything that produces cash flow will be worth more money tomorrow. That's why Netflix is valuable. Why? Because people pay a lot of cash into Netflix. And even if Netflix loses money today, some company will find Netflix desirable for one reason. Cash flow is king. Before you start getting all, oh, God damn, dude. Look, this is stupid. These cars that you're seeing people buy, I think 50 Cent got six of them for Christmas or something. I got my wife a Cullinan and I got myself this. This is ridiculous. You don't need to go out and buy these cars, okay? This is, without a doubt, complete waste of money. And unlike, unlike some of the people that are out buying them, because there's a lot of young kids right now thinking, oh, I'm going to go buy a Lambo. I'm going to get a Ferrari. I'm going to go buy me a Rolls. I watched a 24-year-old kid buy a Rolls Royce. I'm like, man, that don't even look good on you, even if you can't afford it. What you see right here is completely ridiculous, but years, 35 years of hard work. Not just hard work, but making good decisions and putting the money away. Putting the money away and not doing this kind of stuff. Put all this stuff off. Don't do this right now, okay? Pay the price right now. Work hard, get great at your job, get great at whatever you do. So good that, that people are like, man, you're the best. Well, who are you? What do you want? They start asking questions about, wow, what makes you so unique? Then you're gonna start getting paid more. There's no way on this planet that if, if, people, don't, if people start talking about how exceptional you are, you will get paid more at some point. When you do, take that money and invest it in something where you can't lose it, where it pays you every month, and one day in the future, it'll be worth more than it is today. Do that for years. It might take 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. I'm just starting to enjoy my life. A lot of hard work, man. If you can't stay connected to the why, I don't mean why am I doing this, but you gotta dig down the why behind the why behind the why, right? Why do I wanna lose weight? Why do I wanna be in better shape? Why 
Well, because uh, because it, it, it's going to make me healthy. But why do you want to be healthy? Why did I start investing in real estate? And by the way, why did I start making more money so I could have more money to invest in real estate? Why do you want to make more money so you can have more money to invest in real estate? Why? Oh, because I want to spend more time with my kids, man. Because I want to be on a vacation with my kids and not worry about what, what we're doing. I want to be able to go to sleep or go travel or do whatever I want. And I got money coming in. And I want to be able to take care of my parents and my church and my charity. I want to take care of stuff after I die. That's why I invest in real estate. The why behind the why behind the why. Man, what, if, what, would, you do without, what would you do if somebody took all your money? Ain't nobody going to take all my money. Okay, nobody can take all my money. Nobody thinks big enough. You can't steal all my money, dude. A thief never thinks big enough. That's why he steals. A thief steals less than he could have made honestly. Okay, but if I didn't have any money today, take away everything, whatever that means, everything is, I'm still left with what? I'm Grant Cardone. I got courage. I have creativity. If I was 20 years old again, no more drinking, no more drugging, no more weekends until I get my money right. Just like job, sales. Second thing I would do is this. I would invest my extra time, not my money, my extra time, I would invest learning about real estate. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. If I would have been doing this at 20 years old, I'd be worth over a billion dollars today. All I had to do was focus different. What I did was I got caught up in this first job and I started thinking about how good I was doing. One day looked up, I was 35 years old, 33 years old actually, and my uncle says, you need to start paying attention to, to your, your money, money. Mm -hmm. to money working. He said it to me one time, man, one piece of advice I got from my uncle. He's like, you need to start paying attention, you need to get your money working. I'm like, yeah, okay, thanks. You need to hate your life. You guys don't need to like, I'm good, I'm all happy, I'm good, I'm, I'm living the dream. You need to get so disgusted. I told you mm -hmm. this eight years ago. Get so disgusted with your life. Mm -hmm. Get so f***ing, like you hate your life so much that, that, the thing, that the, where you go every day is a solution to getting the life you want. How do you keep your f***ing mojo going? Like, it, it's, like it's like you got more energy. I said, well, it's a beautiful, having a beautiful wife. Thank you, handsome. Women, women, women. Let's just call a spade a spade. Women are the yep. super uh, motivators of the universe. This is my muse right here. Oh, God, I love In you. In addition to the muse, though. Okay, okay. It's a new me this year, folks. Really? In addition to the muse, you guys got to have a pull. You need to have a pull. You're like, man, why, how do you stay? How do you guys stay so motivated? It's the pull. It's not the push. The ball players, I'll say, you know, me, me and Tim Grover were talking about this. Jordan wins a ring, and he's like, okay, now what? Everybody else is out, you know, drinking champagne. But the the true champions are like, what's the next thing? What's the next move? What do we do next? Like, they need the next thing to the keep pull. them what's going. The the, 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 but the, when am I ever going to be satisfied? You need you're a pull. Never, you're never going to be satisfied. And if you are, Never. by the way, by the way, if you are satisfied, you quit. Mm -hmm. you, put, you put your sword down. You quit fighting, playing no, the game. No, it, it makes me more hungry. The speed at which you commit determines your velocity. How fast I can commit to something will determine how fast I can move into that thing and how much power I have, okay? The speed at which you commit, the longer you take to commit to something, the less impact it's gonna have on your community, on yourself, on your life, on your money, your finances. I don't care if it's rehabbing your kitchen, buying a house, and making an investment in real estate, the speed at which you can commit. Dude, dude I wanna collaborate with people. I don't wanna compete anymore. I'm done with competition. So when you hear when you hear all that thing, I think of me, you, everybody I know, that teaches when, business. When you hear all that early sales stuff from me, I was in such a competition mode. It was I was competing with everybody. I thought it was me against everybody, and really, it's just been in the last since we did that first growth conference, mm -hmm. and we had other people on stage, and I didn't do like I didn't do any of the speaking. Yeah. I was just introducing people, doing interviews, and walking, uh, doing mm -hmm. doing Q, Q and A's. Mm -hmm. Five side chat. Even the second, even the second one, even Russell Brunson says, "Dude, why would you? Why are you giving up all your stage time to other people? Because I want to collaborate." Yeah. 
And, and, but then we figured that the other people don't really know how to do it yet. Like, they're like, hey, follow my Instagram. I'm like, that's not a collaboration. We don't, we don't care about your Instagram when I took, spent $6 million trying to get 30,000 people in a room. Yeah. Right now we care about where is everybody going for the next, through next year and 2020. Your surroundings have to change. Okay, the people, your network, your scenery, you will not change your life until you change the people in your life. If your friends aren't changing, you ain't either. My daddy abandoned me. My sister's not gonna like hearing that because she's gonna be like, oh my God, he was good to you. He died. He left me too soon. Period. Call it whatever you want, okay? He left me too soon. He left my brother too soon. Okay, me and my brother were without a dad, man. Tremendous amount of energy. Same kind of like, like just imagine me as a 10 year old in Louisiana with a weapon. <laughs> right? I'm 10 years old. We, we had a 22 right foot. I'm out shooting everything that moves. Cars. Anything, anything and everything. I'm, I'm wild, man. I'm wild. I got all this energy and I don't have a dad and I'm angry. I told my mom when I was 16 years old, one day, one day I'm going to be successful. One day, one day I'm going to be successful and one day I'm going to help a lot of people. And I said that to her because I wanted somebody to help me. See, I've always loved helping people. Always. I am most happy when I'm helping someone else. Nothing to do with money. If I can help somebody, not give them something, but if I can actually help somebody to feel better about themselves, to know what to do in a phone call, to know what to do in a sales call, to know how to follow up their girlfriend or their boyfriend or to solve some problem in their life or how to get some money. If I can help somebody know how to do that, I know I contributed to their life. Are y'all ready for 2019? Are y'all ready? Cause I'm ready. I'm ready, Freddie. Okay. Okay. Look, I got to carry, I carry a fire extinguisher with me everywhere I go. I looped it onto my pants because my game's so hot. That's right. That's right. Oh Woo! yeah. Oh yeah. Put out, put out. My game hot. My game hot. Okay. Yeah. You gotta pull the pin. Pull the pin. Pull the pin again. Oh, shit. You see how hot my game is? Oh, yeah. We should have done this inside, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Ho! 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 Let's go. 2019. I'm a bust oh, your ass. Whoa. Hey, it's. <laughs> Sabrina can't set the right goals right now. Everybody agree with that? Sabrina can't, she can't pick up 200 pounds. You understand? She can fly on a jet. One of my kids has never been on a commercial airline. She's like, Papa, will I ever get to fly commercial? I hope not. I hope you never have to go through that. It's wrong. <laughs> I did 3 million miles so you don't have to. Peanuts I didn't want. And I was doing that on Thanksgiving holidays to go to Canada where they were, they were still transacting business. Super Bowls I've missed, ball games I've missed. My buddies were traveling, seeing the world, and I didn't have any of those experiences. It's been 30 years, 30 years. It's probably gonna be 30 years for you too. It's gonna be 30 years of it. Are you, are you willing to pay the price? If anybody thinks you're gonna be successful without paying that price, you're wrong. Earn money, learn how to store the money and learn how to use it. Because if you can't do this, if you can't flow the money back out, if you're sitting on a grand right now or two grand or five grand, make it official that you're broke. Do not try to save five grand. It's no money. Just make it official, get rid of it 
and be broke. Because you're broke already. And maybe you'll hustle now like you need to replace your reserves. That's why when I earn some money, I store it. Okay, if, if, if I store $30 million, I know I'm getting rid of it. Twice a year, I dump everything I have. Entire, every penny I have does not go into some emergency account. It goes into an asset that will make babies or make me known. And you guys can do this. Everybody in the room can do this, okay? If I can do this, you guys can do this. You need a network, a team of people around you that can hold you accountable. You will go nowhere by yourself. Not even Jesus went by himself. Nobody goes by themselves. Nobody. All right? You have more potential. You know it. If that's the answer to that, get there. Be VIP while you're there too, by the way. VIP. Have a VIP experience. If you can't VIP yourself, why do you think somebody else is going to treat you? like a VIP. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. What are you guys doing, man? Oh my God, you use the Lord's name in vain. Yes, yeah, so what? I do a lot of other good shit. You don't really think that like, like he's he gonna keep me out because I said that, do you? No, come on, keep it real, man. I help millions of people every year, all right? Keep it real, folks. Come on, man. Come on, think a little for yourself. Okay, your best thinking got you in the situation you're in right now. You got money problems, health problems, networking problems. You're introverted. Uh, you don't know where to invest your money. You got your money sitting in Wall Street. You got a house. You got a bad marriage. You got kids that don't like you or kids on drugs or you're using drugs too much. Dude, your best thinking got you in this shit right now. You need to become a very important person. Okay, how do you become a very important person? You spend time with other people that believe themselves to be very important people. The website is 10xgrowthcon.com forward slash VIP. 10xgrowthcon.com forward slash VIP. I could give you a million dollars, son, but it would put you in prison forever. You'd probably blow it in one day, too. I'd rather teach you how to make a hundred million. Okay? All right, guys. God bless you. Appreciate you following me on Facebook. Please tell your friends about me. Um, 10x or die, that's what I say. And die quick. Wish somebody had told me about 10x when I was 20 years old. You guys that are 20 years old, man, listen to what I'm telling you, man. Your buddies that want just enough, just enough to go out Friday night, just enough to pay the bills, just enough to pay the rent, just enough to smoke your little weed. Dude, they're selfish little Little. All you influencers out there who wanted just, just enough money to fly, you know, get an upgrade for your first class, you a, you a bitch. All you guys out there just want fame, but not fortune, you a bitch. I don't know where I am most of the time. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. I just know, hey, I got this moment, man, right here. Let's make the most of this moment. I don't know if I live once or twice. Okay, I know this. I need to take advantage of what I have right now. And I can't do that by myself. I don't want to be by myself. We don't want to just be the four of us. I don't want to just be me, Elena, Sabrina, and Scarlett. I want, a, I, want a, I want a nation. I don't want a tribe. I don't want a tribe. I want friends all over the world. I want Sabrina and Scarlett when they grow up and they go to, to Switzerland. They have friends in Switzerland. Okay, if the world falls apart, we have friends in Oklahoma or in Central or maybe I got to go to South America for a while. Maybe I got to go hang out. Okay, I will not fulfill my mission. My mission is to help people. I will be known for the people I help, not the money I made. Nobody's going to remember. Nobody's going to say 50 years from now, 100 years from now, oh, Grant Cardone had a great jet. Nobody, nobody will ever mention that. My books might live on, okay? My audio will guarantee you my audio will live long after I'm dead. But your memories with me, you using our technologies, okay, will live on forever. You live on through other people. Walt Disney did it. He lives on today, man, okay? Build a legacy, folks. Build a legacy. Put yourself out there, okay? 10X your lives. 10X the lives of the people around you. Give more than you take. Give more than you take. Give more than you take. And I promise you, you will get more than you ever dreamed of. I'm getting ready to do a real estate conference for a thousand 
experienced and mature real estate investors. If you knew what I was gonna share with them, the one biggest, most important number in all of real estate investing, there's one thing. If you read my book, you know what it is. I'm gonna share it with them today and it's gonna blow them top off their heads. There's some people in the room that are retired from apartment investing and they're gonna, I guarantee you, when I'm done today, they're gonna be like, Honey, what was we thinking getting out of this game? We got to get back in it. We did it wrong because we did it small. Ooh. Hey, if you're not investing in apartments, seriously, if you're not investing in apartments, if you don't know the game, had to learn the game, learn the game, figure the game out, I promise you, with every fiber of my being, I believe that apartment investing will prove to be, over the next 25 years, the single best investment that you can make, that you can possibly make, okay? If your life is not the way it should be, then you should f***ing hate yourself right now. I don't blame you. You should. The best way, but dude, I, I hated my shit before I loved my shit. I hated myself so bad I couldn't look in the mirror. Jared told me the other day, he's like, you don't have a mirror in your bathroom. I can bring you in there right now. Sure, there's no mirror in there. Check this out. I said, dude, I don't need a mirror. I remember, you know what, that bathroom, I remember having an apartment where I couldn't put a mirror on the wall. Broke it. I broke the mirror. Look at that, right there, there ain't no mirror there. I told Jared yesterday, I said, dude, I don't have a mirror. I, I said, I, I don't care, I don't need to look at myself. I remember when I'd look at myself and I hated myself. Broke the mirror out of my bathroom because I couldn't look at my face. Because <clears throat> the mirror reminded me, every time I had a mirror, I was putting something on it to put it in my face. Hated myself, man, hated myself. Didn't have any money. Had all this potential, overdosing daily. Guys, want a man you want to change? You got a bunch of potential? Tell you, tell yourself the truth. Okay. Do you have more potential than you're using? Ask yourself right now. Just ask yourself. Just meditate on this a second. Do I have more potential than I'm using? You guys should ask yourself that shit every morning when you wake up. Man, what do you say to yourself in the morning? First thing I do in the morning, I wake up and say, do I have more potential? Thank you, Alex. Do I have more potential than I'm using? Dude, if I do, if it's even this much, then I got to get the f*** up and go get it. This is where God lives. Dude, this is the spiritual part of life, is the seeking of potential, not the seeking of serenity. And happiness, serenity and happiness are f***ing selfish commodities. It's about me, man. For me to seek my potential, the next level, means I got to give up what I have. That's where God lives, man. God's proud of Grant Cardone. You know what? A bunch of humans don't like Grant. God loves Grant. Yo. You know what? Because God's like, dude, that guy, he will put it out there. You guys all praying? You know what my prayer is? My prayer is not talking to God. My Dude. prayer is taking action. I've been there. I've been busted, broke, beat up. I, I've, been, I've been at a point in my life where I thought, I thought less of me than anyone thought of me. How many have been there? Dude, how do I get the right girl, the right family, the right money, the right company, the right employees? I don't even like me. I'm like, what happened to me? What happened? I had more money when I was eight than when I was 25. What the hell happened? I liked myself more when I was six years old than I was tw 25 years old. What happened to me? Now, if you look at me today, six years old and 57, dude, I'm kind of digging myself right now. I like who I am, man. I've spent the last years just doing one thing, dude, working on who I am. Number one most important thing, Warren Buffett says, and I study a lot of people, okay? This year, I'll probably spend this year between mentors, which really my mentor is just a guy that's a hookup. He's hooking me up with other players. Between mentors, I don't even think I say the word right. Uh, books, courses, I'll go off for three weeks and just do a course. You guys worry about a weekend. I can't get away for a weekend. Did I go for three weeks and just do courses? I'll probably spend 400 grand this year on me. I'm worth it, man. How am I not worth 400 grand? Look, you worried about 400 grand. How are you going to get 400 million? See, see, you and I were brought up to worry about what? This, what's in your pocket. Right? I mean, I used to squeeze a quarter so hard it'd fly. 
and scream. <laughs> look, 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 everybody worries about this, right? But whose money is this? Somebody else's money, man. I've already got a workout in, spent time with my kids, did a project at my office because we're doing some construction there, on my way to an event, and then we'll leave there, go to another event in another city uh, about uh, 2,000 miles away. All in the name of business. That's what I say, my brothers, my sisters, my nephews, and my nieces. All business, all weekend. The best things that have happened to me in my life was when I left my room, my house, even the city that I lived in. And um, I think we stay home too much. 29 years old, left the house, moved to Houston. I was terrified. I know somebody think, oh man, Grant ain't scared of nothing. I was so scared to move out of Lake Charles. It was like one of the most terrifying things I've ever done in my life. Once I got there, I was like that. I don't even know what I was scared about. My daddy told me, Dr. Kerr, our local doctor, he was the most successful doctor in the, in, 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 uh, we knew both the most successful doctors, Dr. Kerr and Dr. Morin, right? And Dr. Kerr was at the house and they're drinking martinis. I'm like, damn, I'm gonna do that too. I'm gonna drink martinis, I'm gonna be James Bond, right? And Dr. Kerr came up to me and says, give me a dollar. I had a dollar too. He's like, give me that dollar. I'm like, I ain't giving you a dollar. My daddy said, Never deny a man in power. Never deny a man in power. Okay? Never talk poorly about somebody in power. Push power to power. That's a good investment, folks, okay? If you're taking notes, write this down. Push power to power. People that are doing good things, people that are making a difference, people that are out there, Push power to power and ignore everyone else. We don't help people that have nothing. I'm telling you right now, I do not help people that have nothing. I, have, I help people that have something and want to make it more. I'm not talking about money right now. If somebody thinks they have nothing, I'm not helping that person. If they think they have nothing, I can't help them. If you think you have something and that you're not broke, I can help you. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and what are you going to do to take action on it this week? When you write down what day, what time, and what place you're going to take action on something, you have a 91% chance of following through versus just 35% if you got motivated but never wrote down a plan. And when you share your plan and have public accountability, it raises your chances of following through even higher. So that's what I want to do today for you guys. You watch this video. What was your single biggest takeaway and what is your plan to take action on it this week? Let me know. Put it down in the comments below. It's saying, hey, man, if you got a million dollars, you're basically just a freaking deadbeat. And that your daddy didn't tell you that. If you didn't have any more income and you were... How old are you? 27. You're 27 years old. I'm gonna do this at 47. I'm gonna do it at, uh, at, at, at 65. 27, you don't have any more income. How long would that money last? At $4,000 a month, you got 25 years. Where can you live on $4,000 a month? You'd have to live on $4,000 a month for 25 years. You will be 52 years old, my friend, and dead broke. Number one thing you gotta do is this. You gotta change the target and you need to look at the target daily. The target, you have the wrong target right now. If you're struggling, you have the wrong target. When you change the target, everything changes. Now, and, and I started with zero, just so you guys know. I didn't have anything. Okay, so look, it's simple. Target, what's your new target? Freedom. Yeah, freedom. But, but, but let's put my, uh, a number on it. So your first target should be $10 million and nothing short of that. Number one, the target. Number two. You need to get your income to a place. This is a fascinating concept right here, okay? If you can do this, I guarantee you'll be rich. You need to get your income not to what pays your bills, but to where you can save 40% of your gross income is saved. All right, so now, now when you do this math, you're like, dude, how much money do I actually need? Let's kick this up to 20 grand. At 20 grand, what happens? You're saving eight. 
storage. You're paying eight, and now you can live on four. See, now this is the right way to do a budget. You make 30,000, 12's going to storage, 12's going to the IR and the S, and that leaves you with six. So now you can start seeing, dude, you gotta be somewhere north of 300 grand a year. This is what they don't teach you at Harvard. You gotta be somewhere north of 360 a year before you even have money to live on. Unless you're just, you know, you're a trek. You're just an irresponsible human being that, that's, you know, not putting, storing money away for the future, okay? Now you're saving 12 grand a month, that's $144,000 in one year. In 10 years, that's $1.4 million. In 10 years, you're a millionaire, stored. You guys need to be heavily money motivated from a survival standpoint. Okay, number three thing you're gonna do. You're gonna go broke right here and invest the storage. Storage has to get invested. The golden goose is only good if she lays eggs. Otherwise you can kill her. Eat her for a chicken. Need eggs, ba money needs to make babies. Right? So your goal right here is to invest, to invest the storage money and continue to do that until this money over here, the passive money, is equal to your income. Right? So what would I do? I'd go out, I'm gonna make 30 grand. I'm gonna store 12, I'm gonna pay the IRS, I'm gonna live on six. Warren Buffett says don't lose money, number one. Number two, don't lose money. I would tell you, number three, don't lose money. And that's the reality of the situation. That's what Peter Thiel was saying. A single digit millionaire cannot even provide themselves with their own personal defense in America, okay? Hulk Hogan, all that money Hulk Hogan made, he blew it all. He blew it all, probably buying hair pieces. <laughs> okay, he blew it all, he blew it all, ended up with a little money, thought he was the shit. oh man, I got a little money, until he had that freaking lawsuit, and then he can't even defend himself. So, it happens to a lot of people. How many, how many of you know a family member lost their job? Okay, how many of you have a family member where the kid got a drug addiction, he had to go to, to, to rehab for 30 days and it cost 40 grand? Dude, bad shit happens. How many of you know somebody got cancer? Okay, how many of you know somebody in a car accident cost three or 400 grand? Shit happens. Okay, the problem is not that shit happens, shit happens and people aren't ready for it. Oh God, I can't believe this happened to me. Oh shit, really? God damn, you've been around long enough. Right? How many of you can't swim? <laughs> you live on a planet with water. I'm just saying you might want to get a swimming lesson. It's a wet planet. If you want to change your life for free in the next 30 days, check the link right here below me. Or if you want to know how to 10x your life with Grant Cardone, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy them. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.